All right, look, if you're gonna do three or more exercises for a body part in a workout, and you're wondering how to pick the exercises, consider this, middle, stretch, and squeeze. All right, what does that mean? Pick an exercise that's heavy in the middle portion of the rep. Also pick an exercise where the weight is heavy in the stretch portion of the rep, and then pick an exercise where it's heavy in the squeeze portion. This will guide you in the right way. Typically, this points people towards better muscle building programming. Middle, stretch, and squeeze. Don't forget that. That's yeah. called full range of motion, baby. I bet there's very few people that can take that information and then apply that to an exercise. Yeah, let's. well, let's give, I'll give some examples. <laughs> I'll give some easy examples. I, well, the easiest ones are with arms, I feel yes, like. Yes, totally. I feel like, like that's the best girls. way to, you know, and a lot, before you give the examples, I always thought it was interesting because uh, I, I would count that as like one of the biggest like programming hacks uh, totally. that I remember figuring out totally. as, a, as a kid and like piecing together, like programming, like that was a big, that was a big one for me, right? Figuring that out. And then I always wondered why um, those machines didn't get more popular that oh, you could change. Oh, that you loaded it. Yeah. Like, so you could like range. do a preacher curl yeah. and you could actually manipulate all, to all I three of those, those machines. I know. I always thought they were so cool. And I, and I too complicated. I, you think that's what it was? Yeah, I think people get in and they're just too, you know, complicated. Like not recognizing what really the difference is or just doing what they like best. Yeah. And, you, you know, what's funny about what I'm about to, what <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about is if you look at like classic bodybuilding programming, accepted programming, they, they account for this. This is bodybuilders figure this out. Yeah, they do. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. So here's an example. Okay. We use biceps. This is a very easy example. A barbell curl would be a good example of middle because when I'm curling the weight, it's not as heavy on the bottom. It's heaviest here in the middle when I'm finding gravity directly. And then at the top, it's also lighter. So the heaviest portion of the rep is in the middle. Now, a good stretch exercise would be a preacher curl with the barbell. At the bottom is it feels the heaviest. As I get past that point, then it gets easier and it's easiest at the top. And then a squeeze uh, exercise for biceps would be like a concentration curl where it's heaviest at the top. Or like a spider curl. Or like a spider curl. Yeah. So now, why why is this something that is that you want to consider? Well, if you think of how muscle fibers, the sliding filament theory, which is mostly accepted, about how muscle fibers attach to each other and you know where tension's created, they slide along each other and they grip on each other hardest when the, the tension is heaviest. So I'm going to work muscle fibers differently when the tension's highest at the bottom versus the middle versus the top. Now, we also have studies that show that the stretch portion is actually the the, the most muscle-building portion of a rep. Mm -hmm. So in head-to-head -head comparison, if you load heavy in the stretch portion versus the other ones, you're going to build more muscle. Now, of course, this is not the complete story. You want to work all of the <laughs> ranges of motion. But this is important for people when they're trying to program their workout. They look at exercise. Okay, what should I do for chest today? Here's a good middle, uh, you know, exercise, bench press. You're not getting a stretch. You're not getting a hard squeeze, but in the middle is where you're getting most attention. What would be a stretch? Dumbbell fly. What would be a squeeze? Cable crossover, right? You could do this for most body parts. And when you, and by this isn't the only thing to consider with programming, but it's a hack, just like you said, Adam. Yeah, it's one of those ones that if you didn't understand it and then all of a sudden you just started to pay attention to that and you didn't change any other variables in your programming, yes. you just said, oh, I'm going to make this conscious effort to make sure, which is what I did. Like at that point, I kind of somewhat understood what I was doing. That was a big epiphany. Totally. I started to change just that and like huge growth right away from that. So there's there's a couple things too here. Um, one, you started off with mentioning that you know, if you train, if you do three exercises in a workout, how do you do this? But this still applies for somebody who doesn't do three exercises in a workout. And let's say maybe you do like more like a full body routine, like MAPS anabolic. One of the problem or one of the uh, things that people do is they might one stick with the same exercise all right. the time, right? right? And they only do that middle like bench press, right? They only do that all the time or they're constantly changing it up and they're not being able to measure like, oh, wow, I've trained this way for a little bit and then I switch to the next. So one of the best things to do is like, even if you're not doing three times a week is pay attention to that and go, oh, wow, you know what? It helps you alternate. Yeah, the last few weeks, like the exercises that I chose were all like exercises where it was stressing the muscle mid in the middle. I didn't do anything stretched or at the end, totally. end range. Like, oh, that's a good, and that, that, and that should drive you're a, a good way to drive your, ex it's not the only variable, like you said, but it's a good way to drive your exercise selection on any muscle group that, oh, wow, I seem, I seem to always gravitate to these types of exercises where it's stressing the muscle at the end range or the middle range or whatever it may be. One of the best things you can do to see growth is to switch that up, which by the way, this is also what annoys me 
about arguments about certain exercises. Because if you have somebody who like, for let's just take an example of like the bench press, like you said, and you're like, they're like, oh, of course, bench press is far better than a chest fly because you know, a bench press you could load sure. way more, and sure. you're going to build more muscle. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a fair fair fact. But if I had a client, and this is why I always ask before I give an answer is if I had a client that has never done chest flies or rarely ever does chest flies and they always do bench press, guess what? Me putting them in a stretch position exercise, they're going to see their chest explode That's right, yeah. because they're so adapted to training and That's stressing right. that muscle the same way all the time. That And this is why all the shit on the internet is bullshit because yeah. these variables matter more. It matters more what the client has been doing consistently right on what is the best exercise. So all these people on the internet that, that are coaches and trainers that love to talk shit and make videos about someone who said something like, oh, this is the best exercise right, right, for this, right. and go like, no, the research says this, and yeah. this is what the science says on the you tension. You most only in the uh, squeeze portion of the rep. Yeah. And, and I imagine that a lot of these like single joint exercises and – I see a lot of, uh, you know, bodybuilders do it too, but like in terms of like creating a bit of a dysfunction, like they stick too much to one yeah. particular portion of that. Uh, and then you start to see it in their posture and the way they walk and, mm -hmm. you know, their rigidity in terms of like how they can move. So, um, you know, it, this also helps to kind of counter that a bit. So it's like, we're, we're addressing full range of motion mm -hmm. with like our end range, but also to that, uh, shortened and at the peak. The, the reason why this is such a major hack is because we're all, and we've admitted this too. Uh, and even today with all of our experience and knowledge, still guilty of this. Mm -hmm. Still, if I'm not consciously thinking about my programming, my exercise selection, you stick to your favorites. You right? do. Yeah. You yeah. stick to where you're strong. And if you train a muscle in in a certain range of motion all the time, you're going to be stronger in that range of motion. And so, subconsciously, you don't even realize it. You're choosing exercises that benefits you strength wise, right. not that challenge you to adapt and grow. That's right. And so, learning that about yourself and recognizing the exercises that you always and you go, oh shit, like. Yeah. I tend to always well, do yeah. those movements. What am I not strong? To give you an example for myself, uh, because I, for years, trained mostly, almost entirely with free weights, it was very hard for me to achieve, uh, just speaking with chest, for example, that squeeze portion of the rep because almost all free weight exercise for chest will load mid or stretch, right? A fly, there's almost no resistance at the top. And so then when I went to use machines and I would use a cable crossover or a pec deck, I found that I was really strong back here and then I got to here and I wasn't that strong. So what did I focus on? I focused on the squeeze and mm -hmm. I saw new growth. By the way, just, just a little tangent off this, you know, you, you brought up single joint exercises. You'll often hear advanced lifters with lots of experience, especially bodybuilders who have a lot of muscle hypertrophy, talk about how isolation exercises are so great for hypertrophy and, and I can make my, my delts grow so much with these isolation exercises and my chest and all stuff. We have to consider also, again, side note, is the more advanced you become, the more muscle fibers you can activate with a single joint exercise than you could before. So, and here's why. When you when the central nervous system is activating more muscles, it tends to activate more muscle fibers even in the target muscle. So if I'm trying to activate my chest and I get my delts and my triceps involved and my core and my legs in a bench press, and I'm a beginner, I'm going to get more chest involvement. Now, a advanced bodybuilder can probably get very similar involvement with like a, a fly because they've trained their body so well to be able to activate those muscle fibers. This is why compound lifts are so imperative for beginners and intermediate lifters. But then as people become more advanced, they start to come, sometimes change their mind a little bit and forget where they came from. And so you'll see these advanced lifters go, oh no, machines, isolation is so great. It's like, okay, how did you work out for the first three years of your life? Mm -hmm. Probably wasn't like that you're able to really summon like a, like a good high level bodybuilder can really activate an isolation exercise way more than someone who's been working out for just and a, a year. A lot of that has to do with their ability to flex. That's, That's right. all resistance training is. Resistance training is flexion of the muscle with some sort of resistance, whether that be weights, bands, body weight, whatever. But that's all it is, is the ability to flex a muscle while resisting, right? So yeah. They have this ability to do that. That's why, I mean, this is the value. I know everybody probably makes fun of the bodybuilder who's standing in front of the mirror and he's flexing and he's posing and he's doing all this. There's value to it. There's massive value yeah. to it because they, to your point, that's, <clears throat> I used to be able to, I used to love to teach this to my trainers is that I can get under an exercise or a machine or whatever that is for a different muscle and make another muscle work more. That's right. And that's just, and that's, and that's, that's why all this stuff is so nuanced because it's not as simple as just like, 
do this exercise for that. You can create exercises and make that recruit other muscle fibers by you thinking about it, by being able to flex that muscle more through that movement. I can do, I can make a barbell row, a lat exercise, a rhomboid or mid back exercise or a bicep exercise. Right. I could do all three of those, right? I can make a bench press, a chest or a tricep or a shoulder exercise just by changing the focus right. of and, the movement. And it's a trip because I could probably watch you do that movement and not know which one you are doing. Right. Like you could literally make it look exactly the same, but then you activate, which is by the way, too, this is also why I don't like the, um, you know, trying to make the argument for what exercise is better because the muscle activation. All oh, right, yeah. the, right. The, the mat testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you yeah. see a lot of that. The 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 muscle test, the, the activation, and it's like, okay, well, that that's great, but that doesn't tell the whole story just because that person was has this ability to activate that mm -hmm. that muscle more in that in that movement. Yeah. So. Today's giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. You can win that, but you have to do this. Okay, leave a comment below this video in the first twenty four hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale going on this month. Maps performance is half off. Then we have a bundle called the Extreme Fitness Bundle. That includes Maps Hit, Maps Performance, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. All that, 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. All right, I got to comment on something. So this 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 episode isn't going to air till after we talk about this. So people will get to hear us interview Dave Asprey. But mm. I tell you what, one of my favorite things that uh, has happened since we've had this podcast is the just underestimating or misjudging people to the yeah. point where my mind gets so blown, right? So Dave Asprey comes in, he's going to be on the show. And I had a completely different concept of what it was going to be like and how he was going to be. And we get on and he just surprised me to the point where I just love the guy. I mean, he's so he's funny, dude. hilarious. Yeah. And I mean, I opened the podcast Well, before the podcast started, I poked at him yeah, with the, the joke yeah, I think and he fired back at me and I was like, what? I think the, yeah. be the best part, I was talking to Katrina this last night because she's like, hey, what did you think of him? I said, oh man, I said, I, it was, we really enjoyed it. She's like, oh really? And just obviously her and Courtney, they're responsible for setting up yeah. a lot of our interviews and they were like all nervous because the the three of us were like resisting, like, oh, we got to do this interview. Okay, like, and, you know, just being honest, right? And and he comes in, and and Sal has this thing about him too, like when he's like already not in the mood to do somebody or interview somebody, that he'll do little things to test them and see if they like how they respond. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. so funny to yeah, watch, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And I think we all kind of do it in our own way, right? And, and you guys and, always pull this move where you go to the bathroom and leave me. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, I bro. fucking notice that every time. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Justin's in here trying to entertain Yeah, me. I'm like entertaining. Like, okay, I guess it's on me. <laughs> no problem. Anyways. So yeah, yeah, we did. We left Justin all by himself at first, and then we come back in, and, and we're getting ready to get started. And Sal... Uh, throws like a jab at him about the blue blockers, like just real subtle, like <laughs> yeah, that, just to see. Yeah, yeah. And it was so great because he totally took it on the chin and then he fires back and does a mama joke to Sal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I about fell out of my chair. I'm just like, bro, we haven't met, we haven't been with each other more than about no, two minutes no. right now. Sal was totally feeling out. It's the, the scene. perfect comeback. Dude. It was just I was so like, great. oh, wow. Yeah. It was so great. So, I mean, at that point, I, I instantly knew, like, oh, okay, this is going to be all right. Like, the fact that he could take a jab like that and then fire back a mama joke on Sal. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is going to be cool. And he's, 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 obviously, he's quirky, but he's smart um, and he could take a joke and fire back and uh, fiery. I did not expect yeah. him to be so so fiery. You know. What yeah, I mean? he'll just he'll just say something and uh, with no regard. Yeah. You know, like he wasn't careful Dude. about what he was talking about, which I loved it. It was just like, oh, great! It's I mean, kind of refreshing. And then, of course, I call Adam afterwards because you know, Adam Adam and I have this thing where he's always like, you know, he always say to me like, you know, we always get surprised. We always get surprised. Yeah. So I call him up. I'm like, bro, I fucking love the guy. And he goes, how many times are we going to learn this lesson? I said, apparently <laughs> a lot. <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah, where you, or, all the time. It happens in the reverse too you yeah. think you're gonna like it happens you more yes. it it's i to, when i tell other people time. i and i'm i'm i've gotten a lot better now right like if somebody asks me like if we have someone coming or that, that's so, coming in or and what, what you think what, of someone yeah what or, i think of someone and i'm like you know what i reserve judgment because i've been wrong more times than i've been right yeah more times i'm i don't want to talk to someone or i'm not interested in them and i meet them and i end up really liking them more times I think I'm going to love this person because they're so amazing and I follow them and this, that, and then I meet them and I'm like, so lame. 
So it's like at this point, I'm like, whatever. It, <laughs> just, it, it just mm -hmm. goes to show you, first off, it's like a, a what a one, and this is why I like it so much. What a representation of life. Because we do this all the time in life. You, yeah. you, you, you hear of someone or you look at someone and without realizing it, you create a kind of a judgment on that person. It's just amplified in what we do because we tend to interview people who have a social media or a media presence, which more strongly creates this kind of persona that you think, right? Yeah. So it just gets blown out the water, like you said, Adam, more often than not. And it makes me think about like life. Like, I wonder how many times I do that in regular life, you know, where you just, you see somebody you, you without realizing it's subconscious. Well, that's why too, it's, it's also so important that uh, we have these in-person interviews. Yes. And, and you wouldn't I get think, that up. No, that. in a thing. Cause it's, it, it turns into like a, um, like they're, they're, they're on promotion. They're on like this sort of like canned response, you know, like when they're, when they're elsewhere and they're kind of doing their thing. And this is just like, everybody's guilty of that because they have something they're trying to pitch or, yeah. but like in person, it's like, you can actually like get a feel for who they are and their mannerisms. Yeah. And like, so it's, it's just a completely different. I, lo I love him. I love him. So in fact, after we were done, if I didn't have to go home, I had to go home because uh, we had appointments. I was gonna, I would have gone to dinner with him because he's like, hey, you want to go eat some steaks or whatever? I was like, oh, I wish I could. I would have had a blast with him. Oh, I didn't know he did that. Yeah. I thought he had to get on a flight and go. No, no. He went to go eat. Uh, I don't remember what the place was Burks, called. Burks, it's called. Yeah, Burks. Oh, he went to Burks yeah. over there, huh? Yeah. Oh, wow. Have yeah. you eaten there yet? I've never eaten there. It's good. Yeah, he says there's some type of uh, he has some type of history with the place because he used to work in Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah, they've been around forever. Actually, Burks was like my first like nice steakhouse that I used to go to dinner all the time. Like, the, really? The, yeah, it was before Mastro's, Alex, all those steakhouses over here. Burks has been around for a long oh, wow. time. I'll try it out. Yeah, yeah, try it out. Is that the one where the owner got tried by, tried by, or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Bro, yeah, he, he has a very interesting story. It. Yeah. What? What happened? Oh, dude, he was telling us all about like his the history with the place and the owner was awesome, this great guy, and so he's taking you on the story where you're like, oh, that sounds nice. And he goes, yeah. And then his girlfriend just took a knife and stabbed him to death. Like, caught me off guard. I'm like, what the, f what Whoa, happened, bro? Holy shit. No like, way. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I see. It's wow. over by uh, Great America. So right, you can't miss it. It's like, okay. all right. Is Great America the, still there? Does <laughs> yeah, it even so, exist though? Yeah, it's still there. Oh, it's, it's gone downhill, man. When yeah. was the last time you've been there? Bro, my, I, so I haven't gone there. everywhere. Is it really? Yeah, etched in like, gang stuff it's just like nobody's cleaned it you know like oh, that was the last time i went that's I was like, terrible I'm not going it is too bad i yeah. i used to go I used to love it when i was let's see uh 15 we used to take the light rail to it my cousin and i and we'd go every day in the summer we yeah we had season it. passes in yep. the summertime i'd be there mm -hmm. all the time I, you know i think of when you guys tell stories like that and i was like how funny would that be if like we like i we went all the time in the summertime we had season passes and we'd go all the time we are just enough a, a difference in age that we probably wouldn't have run into each mm -hmm. other you That's know because it makes a difference when you're kids oh yeah no when i was 15 you were what 12 i know but i was going there from i mean literally from eight years eight nine years old all the way up till i was probably 16. how old were you when you're going alone Oh, eight. I never, I never went alone. <laughs> never? Oh, no, it was my, my, so my cousins lived up here. You know, my cousin, Stephanie, who's yeah, been yeah, in yeah, here yeah, before, yeah. lives up in Seattle, oh, right? Who's a big fan of the show. She, her family. So all the girls and, nice. and then me and my sister would go. So it was just like a. a I was at the boardwalk just in case anybody was wondering. Yeah, of course. Of course <laughs> yeah. you were. I, dude, I got to tell you guys that something that happened this morning at the gym that I was a bit embarrassed over. So I, I go work out at the, the, you know, the country club looking place over there and I'm working out and I come in to the locker room afterwards, had a great workout and I have a bag, uh, with me and I take some supplements post-workout. Um, and it's just, they're useless. I know this, but I take supplements and I have a, whatever, I have an addiction to them. So I'm taking them and the guy next to me goes, Hey, he goes, uh, so do, they, do those really make a big difference? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I said, what'd you do it? And he goes, yeah. And yeah, he's like, he's well, like and he looked confused, you know? <laughs> And I said, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, I'm a fanatic, probably excessive. I said, uh, and, and I said, of all the things I'm taking here, creatine will give you the biggest bang for your buck. But even that is like 1% compared to like diet and sleep and all that stuff. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm just kind of a fanatic. And he goes, well, well, how long have you been working out? And I'm like, 30 years. And he goes, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes, but I'm embarrassed because... You know, I'm I, I'm actually setting an example. Had he not asked me, I know. Had he not asked you, he would have just assumed he that thought, he, he sees this buff guy who's taking like, all these wow. supplements. Like, oh, that's what that's I'm not the doing. The formula, yeah, because yeah, right. he was probably like in his mid 30s, and you know, he's been working. I've been seeing them in the in the morning. Looks like he's been consistent lately. And like, how many people don't even ask? Oh my god! Like, and they yeah. see me taking just these say, bullshit what are you taking? supplements. That's oh, gotta be the mo, you know, for most yeah. gym goers to yeah. see. You know, you you observe. You just like from afar. You watch like. 
What's the buffest guy do for everything? That's little, why. The, that's little... why the, the the culture just perpetuates it, yeah, right? Yeah. The bodybuilding, like you. Like, what's the bodybuilder guy look like? Carries around his big bag, mm-hmm. and he's yeah. got, he got all the stuff. in Self reflection. You know what I mean? Because he asked me, and I immediately was like. Ah, uh, nothing, bro. They do nothing. <laughs> yeah. He's like, why are you taking it? I said, because I got a problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just I was not expecting that. Now, I wonder <laughs> if the guy thinks I'm full of shit or if I'm, you know what I mean? Like, no, I don't oh, okay. think so. I think that's, I think that's a honest, I think when you told him, like the fact that he asked how long, yeah. I mean, I did you, refer him to the podcast so that way he could hear more. You know? Yeah, well, and had you not said that, then maybe he does. Maybe he thinks, oh, he just, just doesn't want to give me his inside That's secret. the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah, a kid, yeah. I, there was a guy, a family friend who was a bodybuilder, and he was the buffest dude I knew. And I asked him when I was 15, I'll never forget, I asked him specifically, his name was Joe. And I said, Joe, what do I got to do to get buff, man? And I, t- I literally took him aside from the family. Joe, what do I got to do to get buff? And he goes, all right, so what you got to do? He goes, work your whole body three days a week and he goes, I need a lot of protein. Like, and I'm like, protein powder he goes, no, 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 chicken, eggs, tuna fish and milk. And he goes, go to yeah. bed early and get good sleep. And I remember thinking like this fucking guy doesn't want to share his <laughs> like, What did my dad tell you to tell me this crap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Ned Flanders. Yeah, yeah. whatever, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know? He was telling me the truth. I'm so mad. That's, that's so hard. That's the hard part. The is, I don't know yeah. if, <laughs> I don't know if, if young, if young you listens, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't, no I, way. I don't think you could have told me. I, even as a trainer, I'm guilty of this in my, you know, early twenties. I was convinced because I had I had nutritional knowledge, I had exercise knowledge, I had been working out already for at that point five six years something like that. Um, I was still convinced that it was steroids that kept the difference between me and the guys that were on the cover magazines. I mean, I just and that's not to say that not a lot of them do that. Like, of course, a lot of guys take steroids that are on magazines, but that that was so far from the truth, though. Like, but I I literally thought that. I and there was nothing else you could tell me. Because I knew I trained hard. I knew I six, until you six, took them, and then you saw it for yourself. Yeah, then I took them, and then I was just like, "Oh, this didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. <laughs> like it didn't <laughs> didn't get me to look like that at all." Yeah. So yeah, so I think that, and and there was nothing you could tell me though. I think that if someone else were to tell me like sleep, train this way, do that, I'd be like, "No, no, 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 no." Because yeah. in your head, what you would probably, what the, at least what I would have thought, is. I'm doing way more than that already. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Full body. I trained six That's days. That's what I thought. Six days a when week. When you told you me that, I'm saying? like, bro, I'm working yeah. out every day. Sleep. And I'm taking supplements. Yeah. And you know I take protein powder all the time. Yeah, bro. yeah. What are you talking about? Exactly. So like, I, it's kind of, cr- which is such a good reminder for us when we talk on this thing and we're talking to all these people all the time because you know that there's there's kids that are out there. It's also why I think, I mean, I always have a, a, a greater appreciation for the young kids that listen to this. I get the the 30, 35, 40, 45. Yeah, that's growth minded, right? Yes. Yeah, I like the, the 30, 35, 40 plus people, like, yeah, they already been on that journey. They kind of figured some yeah. shit out themselves and they're like, okay, I I they yeah. right away they connect I've to I've tried the, all that mess. already. But when we have like a 18 year old or a 21 year old that's listening to us, I'm always impressed. Yep. Because mm-hmm. the vast majority of that age group is not following us. Mm-hmm. They're following yeah. all the cool influencer kids that are like showing off the cars and doing all whatever mm-hmm. entertainment shit to get their attention. I think we're just a bunch of old fuddy duddies that are talking yeah. about Dude, fitness. You know? I got trolled as a trainer like that. My cousin and I went to the first, our first certification was the 24 fitness personal training certification. So that you, back in the day when you worked there, they would certify you through their own course or whatever. So I'm 18 years old. I'm in this course with my cousin and there was this dude that was sitting next to us and he was like, he was jacked. And my cousin and I were like, dude, you know, you know cause we're all like, we wanted to you know build muscle. So we asked him, we're like, what do you do? Like, how do you get so so jacked? And he's and he gave us super basic advice. Eat a lot of protein, lift weights, get stronger. So we kept bothering him because my cousin and I were like, he's not telling us like this. So he trolled us. He trolled us the third day we were there. Swear to God, I, can't, I wish I remember his name because I'd call him out right now. He came up to us and we we bothered him again. We're like, come on, bro, tell told us you, a secret. Tell you some bullshit. He thing. did. He goes, all right. And he looks like this. He goes, looks, looks to the left, looks to the right. <laughs> and he goes, Smilax. It's a supplement called Smilax. Now, back in the 90s, there was this bullshit supplement called Smilax. I was supposed to whatever. Is that the rub on one? No, you take oh. it. Like, it's, it's, Doug, you can look it up. It's like, you remember good. the rub on one? What was the, uh, oh, what was Happy X Lax is what it is. <laughs> yeah, Smilax. No. Yeah. No. So I, so I went and bought it. I went and bought it, and I was like, "This is good." My cousin bought it. We were like, "So pumped!" Did shit, did nothing for us. He totally trolled us. <laughs> what was in Smilax? Do you remember? That's the name of the. That's the name of the herb. Or the oh wow, it's like yeah. total yeah, bullshit. It's actually they make root beer out of it. It's sarsaparilla root, I believe, is the root as the core of it. And Smilax has some 
Maybe some health properties. I don't know. It's, I wouldn't it's be surprised. obscure enough to where like listen, you're you're kind of believing them. Listen, I would not be surprised now that I just said that. In fact, Doug, look up Smilax Examine because yeah, they have yeah. a great website for our studies. Now that I said this on the podcast, I I I'm going to predict the company's going to come out and they're going to re- they're going to just resurface this. <laughs> they're going to resurrect. They're going to make an ad out of you saying that because yeah. yep. uh, that's like the new thing, right? Yep, yep. Because it's got like I don't know some benefits. Does it say anything there? Hold on, I'm going to look it up here. Yeah. So S M I L A X. Anyway. What was the other one that used to no re- search results? Okay, look up sarsaparilla root, uh, and then examine. what was the other one that used to rub on the muscles? Remember that one, the, the really... cream that used to. Oh, was that like niacin, or I... it would make it all red? Yeah. <laughs> For better pumps, you were supposed to like you rub it up, rub it on your arms and stuff. I like remember that. thinking too, like, how does it get to the muscle? All right, yeah. whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just made your arm red. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was rubbing Tiger Bomb, but that was you know. So different. you were put? Did you go Tiger Bomb? I was go- a Tiger Bomb, and because my dad would do it like before we even played basketball, you know, <laughs> just it, smell like he a had to. He just smelled like you know medicine and and you, and burning. You know that actually works. You know how it works, right? It works. So Jessica has this. Well, it heats up the skin. Well, sure. here's what it's so, so Jessica, she suffers like, from it's, migraines. It's related to CNS stuff. Yeah, right? Yeah. So she suffers from really bad migraines and there's like almost nothing she could do when she gets them, just, except for maybe preventative stuff, right? She got this really strong, uh, like this really this small bottle of this green oil that she got in, I want to say Thailand, when she used to travel with Cirque du Soleil. Mm. And she's like, this is like a miracle for, for migraines. And what she did, she put a little bit on her hands and would rub on it on her temples and her head. I heard about that, yeah. And you smell it. It's really strong, uh-huh. like uh, like menthol or something like that. Yeah. So I remember when she first did it, I'm like, that doesn't work. And she's like, no, it does work. <laughs> so I looked it up. And what it does, it just confuses your your, yeah. your pain receptors. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that because it's Diverts on the surface it. of where the pain is, and yeah. it, your 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 receptors pick up the the menthol or whatever, it confuses the signal so you no longer perceive the pain. That's, That's like a, like a mild sense. version of like self-mild fascial release. Something like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Kind really of tricks weird. the CNS yeah, to yeah. think, yeah, relax. So uh, nothing, you can nothing there. Yeah, I'll end up, I'll look it up. But anyway, you guys know that there's a, like this crazy event that's coming up that hasn't happened in like, let me look this up. While you're looking that up, like you know, speaking of events, you know, we're going to Arnold. It's on the, yeah. it's on, it's on the calendar. Yeah. It's on the calendar. We're coming. We're back. Yes. Actually, uh, yeah, we have been before, but it wasn't. Uh, did we go to the Arnold? We went, but it was closed down. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. 2020. Yeah. 2020. When that was our largest down. live event we ever did. We're yeah. gonna be at we're gonna be there with Transcend at the the whole thing, right? The whole yeah, thing. we haven't they haven't determined. So the the right now they're working on getting a local gym. Oh, and we're gonna do a meet and greet. Yeah, we're gonna That's do right. a, we're gonna do a meet and greet uh, at a local gym somewhere, and then of course we'll be floating around the Arnold with Transcend and them. But uh, yeah, stay yeah. tuned. Stay tuned because we'll let you guys know. But it's all meet with us. it's March first and second. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a good time. Yeah, I like the yeah. Arnold uh, Festival better than the Olympia. It's yeah. supposed to be better. I've heard, yeah, like heard things. Yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. That, the, the, the first time I rem- went, I remember there was this skinny dude who had an arm wrestling booth. He was an arm wrestling champion and he was skinny. He was like 140 pounds and he had a line of people and he, nobody could beat him. And he was just, every bodybuilder <laughs> was just crushing him. I remember I was like, wow, this is amazing. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, skinny black dude. Oh, that's cool. All right. So here's what's coming up in this year. The last time this ha- this happened was in 1803. What? So this is going to be a this is a big deal. So cicadas, am I saying them right? So you know what a cicada is? No, yeah, bro. Okay. I, I, I mean, when I was in Illinois, they're everywhere. Okay, like, what is every it? tree, like everything, just hummed at night. Okay, what? what? So cicadas uh, live on they're a 13 year cycle. So like they'll <clears throat> they'll they'll pop out every 13 years and you'll get a whole new, you know, brood or whatever of cicadas. There's another breed of cicadas that's on a 17 year cycle. So they never correspond, right? Cuz it's 13 year 17 year 13 until they finally until match. Until they finally so match. 17 times we're 13. We're going to have like a plague of them. Is this is going to be like is that right? cicada Seven, apocalypse. 17 times 13 <laughs> is the, the however many years it takes before they overlap. Yes. So look what that says right there. Billions of cicadas are expected well, this is called the double brooding. They're not like I've locusts. Never, so. I've never heard of this. Yeah. This is fascinating. They're so, just big ass like flies, you know, for the most part. So do, we don't really have many here, right? Around here? We got I, some. I'm, I'm pretty sure we have some here. So what, I hear them. So, but in the, like the Midwest, it's, I think it's going to be like an apocalypse. It's huge out there. Like yeah. they're going to be all over your huge. car, everywhere. Wow. wow. Like billions. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. Where did you see that? Okay. It's so all over the, it's been popping up. I actually, feet. like when I was, um, 
in uh, Chicago and I was like at my friend's wedding and this is like opportunity. I was like dating Courtney at the time and I was deciding like, okay, I'm going to propose when I was out there, it was cicada season. And I had this whole thing orchestrated where I was going to go to this like beach that was near the lake and like, <laughs> talk about you, bad timing, huh? dude. And I get out of the car. It's like, Brrrr! and she's really not into bugs, you know, at <laughs> all. And, and so did like, you propose still? Out, she, no, I couldn't do it there. Cause like my, my plan was foiled. That's and so hilarious. like, I had to like, she just goes that. right in the car. I'm like, no, it'd be worth it. Come on. I'm like <laughs> trying to sell it, you know, as I'm walking down the trail and You've she's never like, no. told this story. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was three failed attempts. So. You tried what? to propose. Whoa, bro. How do you never share that you tried to get married or propose three times and failed? Yeah. I thought I told this story. Yeah, I do so. not. Do you remember that story? Never. I do yeah. not remember this so story. So then there was another attempt where I was like, uh, okay, well, I know this bar that was like really cool, really swanky. Like um, it, uh, you know, had jazz and blues. And like I kind of knew the owner back in the day. And uh, I, I'm like all excited because um, it's it's a really like cool place, and and I'm like this will probably be the spot, you know. And then I'll I'll you know I'll do some asshole move, I'll get the mic and be like hey, you know, like <laughs> something, you put know, it on the spot. like yeah, put yeah, put it put it on the spot. Turns out they they redid it. Now it's a sports bar, you know, <laughs> and the whole thing was just like totally like all these like you know dudes and they're yelling at the TVs and I'm just like oh this is not the vibe I'm going for at all. <laughs> that was the second attempt. Yeah, this is totally not. And I have like the the ring and everything. In my oh pocket, my god! Bro. And I'm just like just sweating. And I'm like oh my god, it didn't work. Like this isn't, <laughs> you know what's I'm like oh my god, I'm gonna be like the typical dude that does uh you know the the tower in you know downtown like i'm going to do like the watershed tower i'm going to do like um, all the cliche places yeah the cliche like and so we did do that man why can't i think of the main um building there but it's it's sears tower okay so the sears tower so i go this tour right and this is like you know my last attempt for the day and i go up i go up there First of all, the vibe was really weird. There was a guy that was like yelling shit on the street, and somebody was like, "Ah, fuck you!" And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> "Like this isn't good." And the guy, and there was literally somebody like stole somebody's purse and was like running across the street. And I was like, "Hey!" And I'm like, "Oh, that." Well, let's just forget about that. And then I'm like trying to push her into the uh, building, and we get into the tour, and we get up there, and it was like, you know, just stuffy up there, and this kid was just crying, and like some lady was like sneezing, and I was like, it's just, no, I, like, this is not good. Oh my like, God. I'm not going to do this. Gonna, she's like, I don't like, she was like uncomfortable, like in <laughs> wanting to leave. And I was like, oh no. I was like, is this like a sign? Like, I just, I don't think I, we're going to start off on the right foot, you know, if I'm going to do it here. So I had to like, literally just I'm like, you know what? Forget it. I'm done. Like that was the end of the night. Like that was it. And then, uh, so you carried it around all day all and day, attempted three different three times, times and, and didn't do it at all. Didn't do it. Oh big my God. Box in your pocket. Big old <laughs> ring box. <laughs> hugging her like this, you know, like trying not to like expose. She, the funny part, she didn't even see it. It was so obvious. You oh know? my God. And so I had to wait. And so it was like literally the next day and I'm just like, you know, let's just go to the park and chill and, and do whatever. And, uh, and so I was like walking down to this park. It's a beautiful park. Uh, had like the the view, the skyline of the city in the background. And so I was just kind of walking back slow and I was like, you know what? I was like, hold on a second. And I went and I like I grabbed my phone. I gave it to this lady. I'm like, can you take a picture of us? You know, and like it was like all framed. And then I I kind of started posing and then then I dropped down, and just did it randomly. Uh, okay. And the lady was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I almost Drops dropped the, the phone. I'm like, lady, <laughs> you're killing me. Uh, but yeah, she took it and then I did it there. But it was like, it was so not what I had planned, you know. That was like the spontaneous oh, like wow. thing. But that's that, great. Okay, how, Sabotage. How how what, were you super nervous? Were you, like, oh yeah, I was sweating. Yeah, was yeah. Sweating I could only imagine like three <laughs> fails, like bro, all day. Just knowing you, I bet you were like like anxiety, oh, like crazy bro. all Lucky. night. I don't think I slept, dude. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, how wow. did you? Okay, how did you do your two proposals? Oh uh, huh? well, the, fir the first one uh, I took her to I don't uh, Half Moon Bay. We got a hotel room, the whole thing. Okay, yeah, just classic. Did you do it like in? In the hotel or like yeah. walking by the ocean? No, we didn't. We didn't. The okay, hotel, okay. Yeah. And then uh, with Jessica, because of my, app, I, I was a lot of back and forth because I had just got, I had gotten divorced, but I'd uh, she had said to me, and this is this is, I mean, I don't think I ever shared this on the show. No, you haven't. She said to me at one point, um, "Listen, I'll I'll be with you. I, I I'll be with you no matter what." And you know, I accept the fact that you know maybe you never want to get married again. And and when she said that, it, I let go of all the fear. 
I had let go of all the fear. And then it was real fast. It was like, let's do this. So it wasn't even like this formal thing. It was like, hey, um, I want to be with you. I want to marry you. I want to have kids with you. Yeah, so yeah. then that was it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, the best proposal I ever saw was my friend of mine, uh, Bav. He, he took his wife to the beach just to hang out. And while they were walking, there was a, like a, a circular table with two chairs and candles. And they're walking up and she's like, that's weird. What's this for? And he goes, oh, this is for us. And they sit down and then a waiter shows up, brings them a meal. And then a diver walks out of the ocean. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, with scuba gear and everything. Yeah, walks out with the little yeah. diving bag, pulls out the ring, gives it to him. And then he proposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he killed. I mean, he just crushed everybody I've ever heard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've yeah. heard of the table on the beach type of deal and yeah. stuff like that and having that all set up. But I haven't had seen a diver yeah. come out. Yeah. That's My pretty- brother did the whole treasure hunt thing like that on the beach and like had it like all these different beaches they hit and then like had to open things. I'm like. That's way too creative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, calm down, dude. You're going too uh, far, bro. Yeah, too far. Oh, that's yeah. funny. I didn't know that story about her because that's a very similar. So uh, Katrina and I, although I didn't propose right afterwards, uh, it was actually still years later. But we had it like a year. Uh, God, we were around five or six years, and we weren't we weren't married yet, and we obviously don't have Max or anything like that. And we're, st- we're not at where I wanted to be before, like, I settled down and get married. And that has to do with, like, financial security and all that bullshit. And that was a big deal for me. And when we first got together, it was never a big deal. Like, she was, like, single girl, yeah. wasn't talking about marriage, kids, none of that stuff. Obviously, we've been together five, six years. Now the family's all, okay, what's up? Mm-hmm. You know, you guys have been together forever. And so that pressure started to happen. Then all of a sudden, like, all her friends were having that. And it really caused a lot of issues with her and I of like, I I could feel this like pressure Mm -hmm. on her. And then the pressure came on me that we needed to do something. And I'm like, we're not where we're not where I wanted to be before that all happened. And we almost had this, this, that was probably the one time in our relationship where we almost broke and went different directions. And I remember I even like packed my stuff up to leave and stuff like that. And I came back one time and she was sitting on the bed waiting for me. And what she said to me, very similar to what Jessica, I didn't know that said to you, which was, which was all I needed to hear which was, she goes, you know, I really don't care um, if we get married and have kids. Like, it's like, I want to be with you. And she's like, I thought about it. Like, would I rather be with you for the rest of my life and never be married and never have kids? Or do I want to run out and get married to some guy and have kids? Yeah, Jessica said something very similar. And she goes, I would rather be kidless and not married and be with you for the rest of my life than to be. And I was like, (laughs) After that was like this massive weight, and then it was like you know I don't know how, how much longer we it's, did. It's so why it, it totally. I mean, I don't, and that wasn't the intention. You know, I don't. It wasn't. I could. I mean, yeah, yeah. She didn't do it like because I didn't even. Propo- it wasn't like she said it. To I didn't get even you propose to her for years still yeah. later, but yeah. it was su- it was such an important moment in our relationship well, that I needed to hear that from her because it it, it was this pressure from everybody else was it starting didn't to allow you to to, mm-hmm. to really be in touch with your own internal you know driver right because otherwise it's external i'm doing this because <clears> oh <throat> she's gonna leave me or pressure yeah versus like this is what i yeah for me it was just my own uh fears and insecurities i mean i, I had you know getting divorced and, and doing the whole you know dual custody thing i was terrified terrified of having more kids and getting married it was like never not gonna do it no way in hell not gonna happen and, you know, and of course I meet Jessica and just such an incredible connection. She's an amazing woman, but there was still that fear there. So when she said that to me, then my real inner self came out. My fear was gone because now I didn't have that pressure. My fear dissipated. And then my real, who I am at my core is I like to be a dedicated person and I love children. I love children. I love big families. And so that came out and I just overwhelmingly like, yeah, you know what? I want to do this, you know? And she wasn't like, mad or anything she was like okay cool no, so no. That, was, that was the deal it's so weird i'm reading a book right now i sent you a screenshot yeah of it you did called Nonviolent communication it's been around for a long time <clears throat> it is it's so far it is very profound and one of the things it talks about is how we get people to we try to get people to do what we want or not do what we don't like by either through fear shame or guilt mm-hmm. and you know and i thought about raising kids with this which is like do, you know, is is your desired outcome that your kid just does what you want, or do you want them to do what you want because they want to do it themselves? Very different. Yeah. Very, very different. So it's like either like don't do that or you'll be punished versus finding a way to communicate to them to where they they want they choose it themselves. Right. And I was like, oh my God, I was not raised that yeah, way. Yeah, this is gonna be a pattern for you if you don't figure this out. Yeah. yeah. And it's building a relationship. You know, Jessica's really good with this. It, it, and it takes longer, by the way, than the old fashioned way. But it's really good. Like my son, my three-year-old, 
like last night, he was really anxious uh, to go to bed. And, um, and so she was with him this morning real early. And he's three years old, keep in mind. And he says to her, he goes, Mama, I, 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 I get really nervous. He goes, I feel it in my tummy. And he goes, and I, I feel lonely when you leave. So that's why I want you in here. He's three years old. I can't even describe my feelings yeah, in my body. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've done it before where, you know, I'll work with a therapist and I'll be like, what is your, your tell me where, what it feels like. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> where do you feel it? What color is it? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't feel it, you know. Orange. In fact, my three-year-old can do it. It's pretty, yeah. pretty amazing stuff. Uh, so, that's anyway, crazy. I know. Good you know stuff. that uh, we, I told you guys how I've been doing this thing with Max with the, with the books and everything like that. Yeah. So and I'll make this our shout out today too, because uh, I know we're not there, but I mean, I'll, I'll just don't want to forget it. I thought this was so cool. So you guys are familiar with um, Leapfrog, yeah. The, the yeah. company that makes mm -hmm. all the like yeah, cool, yeah. like learning toys and so oh, yeah. that. Have you seen their book one? No. It's fucking so sick, dude. So obviously Max is four. He's not reading yet, right? He's not re actually little, like reading words yet. We're barely like sounding out and counting and things like that, right? He can do his alphabet, but he's not reading by, at all. So their their books for learning teaching on that it comes with this uh, mechanical pen about this big and it has like this magnetic tip on it and it has a speaker in it, and the book it's so sick like he he pushes the the words and it reads for him mm. so it, it it prompts him to look at the so word. he knows that the word is this it yeah and like it that. says it to him and so he literally is oh. reading reading the book one word at a time hitting hitting the words and going through and it takes him like a while oh here it is right here. So see the book. Oh, right? Leap Reader. Yeah. So cool. Oh, great. Yeah, so, great and I, idea. you know, considering he can't read yet, I thought, oh, is he really going to do this or is he going to like it or like that? Like took right to it, loves doing it. And it takes him like a good, like 15, 20 minutes to get through a book because he's reading every word. He's got to put, do And he's into it. And he's into it. Right. Oh, that's great. So this is like now the, like, so it used, remember I told you it was originally me. Like, so it would be like, hey, 10 books to get those Legos. Yeah. And then I had to read the books. Right. But I was like, I was trying to train him that. Eventually, it'll yeah. be this. So this is like the next step to that process wow. that we've moved from me reading the books to now, like he just, I had, I just ordered him this thing, this scientist kit, because he's all into that stuff. And it's, you know, 11 books. Like that's yeah. what he knows he has to read. And he could probably only knock out like one or so two a night. So once you get the pen, you could just buy a bunch of these books yes. that go along with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's really cool. I'd never seen that, but my dad actually got that for- They've got such good stuff nowadays that you can find. I, I mean, that is just, yeah. br it's brilliant. I told you guys about the, uh, what was it? It was like uh, like qu like physics for kids. Um, uh, there was, it, they're like science books, like deep stuff, but it's for children. And mm -hmm. I'm reading them to my three-year-old. Like it's explaining black holes, mass, gravity. Now it's not like breaking it down. But it's introducing the concepts. Yeah, I would, oh, these books are amazing. Yeah, I can't remember the name of them. Really yeah, stuff. I can't remember the name of them, but they're they're really cool. They have some on economics. <laughs> yeah, that you can. The, teach your the kids. other hack. So then this one, this gift came from my mom. Um, is number blocks. So if you haven't got uh, him number blocks, like it would, did we only have opened them up like two weeks ago exploding his his ability he's doing math now he's like and it's brilliant so what are they so they're 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 little blocks look up number blocks doug they're little blocks and they just want one to well they go all the way up higher but they, the first kit is like one through ten and uh -huh. they just like click them onto each other and they put little faces on them and stuff like that and they represent see those little those ones right there you, you yeah those ones oh okay and they have cartoons on uh, uh netflix and stuff that go that go with it oh wow and they they sing and they do all the stuff oh, and yeah. it's like it's teaching them math the whole time and so his this is all he wants to watch for cartoons now so now he's not even watching any traditional cartoons it's all math cards so i love it because it's like He's like, can I watch cartoons? We're like, yeah, it wants, can I watch number blocks? And so he just wants to watch. And there's Dude, that looks exactly like that one show. I forget. Like, uh, there's a party in my tummy. So yeah, yeah me. You remember that? <laughs> no, song? I don't. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm all alone here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was hoping somebody knew because no, then I know the name of it. But it's like I remember it all just for the you, songs. And it was like super entertaining, but it looks they have like a one-eyed monster. They have like so, this, I mean, like, this story, guy. Is story uh story somethings. Mm, uh, whatever uh, I, I mean I, see, I don't I'm, know. I'm telling you we just introduced this two weeks ago and I've I, I have watched him leap massively in in math and counting from like, he's counting to 100 now right like we would wow. you, yeah he was like 20 was like kind of where he would get like kind of start to get lost and so that counts to 100 now no problem now we're doing math 
like adding because that's how they do it. The whole thing is oh, like Yo Gabba Gabba. Oh Gabba! Oh, you knew what you knew what it was, that. Doug? Are you kidding? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah show's I, I, awesome. I, I, uh, no, it's not, bro. Gabba, that was the Gabba? only like Yo, Gabba, Gabba, show Gabba, yeah. I was like. I about, hated that. Dude. So I do remember that. Yeah. I remember that from my older kids. They would watch Yo Gabba 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 Gabba. Like, what I freaking remember. drugs were they on? Who a lot of this? drugs, and it was it, great. They were. It's like Pee Wee's Playhouse and stuff, dude. Growing up, like that was the best. Do you know who bites off of Pee Wee? You know who totally bites off of him? The whole, like his persona and everything? Blippy. Oh. You ever oh, watch Blippy? No, I don't watch that guy. You watch Blippy? That guy's annoying. What do you mean? Of course you do. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, the, I was him for Halloween. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So Max the way Blippy talks oh, and yeah. dances, I'm like, that's Pee Wee. I mean, I'm so, I'm so, I mean, that's a whole other conversation. I'm so fascinated with that market. Like, you know, there's two blippies. You have to be so. Yeah, you know the whole story behind all that? Oh, they, they sold for so much. Oh, yeah. No, he's yeah. like, he's worth millions and millions of I dollars. I thought they sold for a billion. Yeah, well, yeah, he sold the, the, I don't, him himself, like the, he signed a contract oh, with a okay. network and he's, he's getting paid a bunch of ways. So he, obviously he scaled this thing to this massive thing. He's pumping all his content out. He's making millions of dollars from YouTube and all the other stuff that he's got going on that's attached to it, like all his product yeah. and stuff like that. And then of course, he, and then he starts doing tours where he does live yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. concerts where he, all, all these kids come and everything like that. And so what happened was he's doing all this stuff. He finds a double. Mm. who he's splitting the work with and then the the kids would show up to the to the thing that's not the real blippy oh my god yes and they would get so like there was like, like calling him out oh yeah there was moms that tried to sue him over it and it <laughs> turned into a big old ordeal because he yeah because he did that so now i think what he does is he does the other guy does a lot of the youtube yeah now. so the other his his, his double does and he the, does the live does and then he does the live stuff like that but I know uh, Katrina didn't even know there was a double. I'm like, hun, that's not the same guy. Yeah. She's like, yes, it is. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm oh. all paid. Look closer. And because he found a really good double yeah. and it is a total like ripped off persona. It's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. he's like super original. Yeah. Did he ever get into uh, Coyote Peterson? No. no. That guy was the best, dude. I, like, I was actually sad that it moved on past him, but he was the guy that would like, was really into nature and he'd, he'd get like, uh, some of the deadliest insects and he'd like let them sting him and he'd rate the pain what? of getting stung. Oh, I've seen him before. Yeah. No, I've never seen him. Oh, that's guy. crazy. He's bro. awesome, dude. He, it, and like he he tries to describe what he's feeling as he just got bit by like a bullet ant. And you're like, oh my God, this guy's psycho. <laughs> he's you like, know? The, who's, the, who's the alligator guy? He's kind of like, yeah. Oh, the guy that died? Yeah, yeah he was yeah. just like that. Yeah, he, he, he was he, like the new version of- uh, For uh, like kids and bugs yes. and insects. What is the alligator guy? What was his name? Steve, Steve Irwin. Irwin. Steve Irwin. Have you seen his daughter do, do She's the all into it. Stuff? She's yeah. all into it now. Yeah, yeah. He's a son, oh. a son and a daughter, Oh, right? man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. As a father- I know. Oh, God. Great, she's carrying the torch. Because she was, because he took his kids with him. Remember, he would take yeah. his kids to do this, the, the things with him. Oh, breaks my heart. Yeah, dude. I know, that's dude, cool. totally. The one that Max likes, so you'll, it, it's funny if you come across this, is Stephen Maggie, which is like a, he's like an English guy, but it's like the the, the English version of Blippy. His name's Stephen Maggie, and he has like, it's just he, man, I, he barely just grew out of that. There's something unnerving mm. about these adults acting in ways that appeal to kids. Like when I watch Blippi, I'm like, man, if I met someone like that in real life, I'd be like, I know you don't I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm torn. Yeah. I'm torn because, uh, I mean, I have, have a, to do I have, I have yeah. a mother, I have a best friend. I have, se I have several teachers in my family and my network. And, and some of them have a, a genuine just love for that. Like yes, yeah. I tell Katrina all the time. I'm like the one sad thing about my mom being far away and not being close to being close to us is that nobody interacts with my son the same way she does mm -hmm. because she's a teacher. And mm -hmm. I, and I took it for granted, right? Because it, yeah. I was around it all the time. Yeah, my mom's like that. My oh man, like there's, yeah. there's there's everything Max does. Very animated. Everything she, he does is t a teaching lesson. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't just play with like yeah. most people play with him. I mean, it's it was, play for him. Yeah. But well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like everybody else, like just plays with him. Like whatever he wants to do, they're playing and they're yeah. acting and they're having fun, which is great. I love that. But my mom always, it's always a lesson while mm. while she's playing. She finds ways to teach him colors and math mm. and sounding things out and words. It's like. And that's that teacher vibe, you know what I'm saying? So she, like, that's, people are like that. There's people that just have this desire yeah. to get, and that's what it is, is they're effective communicators to kids. They it's know- It's a different type of communication. It is a different type yeah. of communication. Some And some adults have, don't do this very well with their kids, Is and there's a lot of parents that have this disconnect that- like they don't know how to get the kid to want to learn. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a, there's a skill to that of mm -hmm. like learning how to interact, play and learning. And those, I think those people yeah. do that really well. Yeah. You know? All right, I'm going to take a, a left here, give you a little update. I've been getting messages on people asking me about my, you know, how I've been with the cannabis and if I've been able to kind of not use it or whatever. Haven't used it in a while. And I will say that the Ned 
completely replaced cannabis for me, 100%. So all the enzyolytic effects that I liked or whatever, obviously it's not cannabis, but I use the hemp oil in the evening and it totally takes care of it. Gives the, you that somewhere. So you do it like at the same time you would normally like Yeah, so like I, a, I used to do it at night and uh, I'd want the enzyolytic effects and the relaxing or whatever. And the Ned totally does that, although I'm not inebriated, I'm not high or whatever. It's so, it's so great for that. So, mm -hmm. and we never, and I mean, I've never talked about that on the show as a great replacement. There's a lot of people who, who, cause cannabis, you know, has gone through this kind of journey of like illegal to legal. It doesn't do any harm to now people are like, eh, probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people who messaged me and said, you know, I got an issue with cannabis and I'm like, dude, I, I'm the Ned totally solved that problem for me. It's really interesting how it's gone through that. I went through that same journey too of like, I was, I was so funny. Like uh, when I got into this space, I was anti-weed. I was yeah. like, so, you know, <laughs> athlete, good kid, like growing yeah. up, like, you know, losers did weed. Like yeah. it was like, I had that. I went through that spill. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, and then, then I accept it. Then I went the other extreme, the other way where I'm like getting high, like freaking crazy. And it's like, you know, I think there's somewhere this this middle ground of like, okay, so we understand that it's not innocuous. That's right. But it's not heroin. That's right. Yeah. And so, and it can, it can be used as a tool, but like any other tool, it can be dangerous mm -hmm. if you if you abuse it like anything else. And just because it's dangerous doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna it's not gonna kill you. But dangerous in the simple fact that it be, can become a serious habit that keeps you from doing other productive things in your yeah, life. Yeah. That's the dangerous yeah, part to me yeah. about that. Yeah, and and Ned is totally it's uh, solved that hundred percent. Love it. Absolutely right, love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, even now, more now. Now, would you take, I don't this is kind of silly, but would you take that with any other like adaptogen or any other things like with that? Like, so if I, if I, I like Ned brain blend the best, uh, uh, because I take that in the morning. Yeah. That is very, I that. yeah, I feel great. I feel good. Like mentally sharp. If I use anything at night, then it's just regular hemp oil. And if I need sleep, it's the sleep. Blend. But you wouldn't like mm -hmm. do like the, the Ned hemp oil and, and combine it with like things like theanine or the shilajit or so like- So the do... brain blends already got some stuff in there. That, oh, okay. That it doesn't yeah. just have the cannabinoids that help with productivity. It also has uh, plant extracts that are non-hemp derived that help with that. But, but I'll combine that with pre-workout caffeine or something like that and it's oh, it's it's amazing oh wow it's yeah so if i'm gonna do like a big podcast and i don't use it daily but if we're gonna do like a big podcast and i want to feel like on fire then yeah. oh yeah i'll do that with some caffeine and it's incredible i've been going kind of crazy with the brain stuff uh it, ever since like i forget who brought it up but they were talking about like when you lower the inflammation in your brain and yeah. like you know how it affects your behaviors how it affects your cognitive ability like like so many things and i'm just like I'm just, I, I'm on a mission, I guess, to, to really kind of figure out like what the, the, the best combo is for me and to see like how far I can Dude, go in terms of getting back. You know what you might to do? Learn, to remembering things. You know what you might do well with? Hmm. A GLP-1 agonist, like some glutide. I know that people use it for weight loss. Are you trying to tell me something? No, I'm not trying to <laughs> sideways get you to <laughs> lose weight. I know people use it for weight loss, Yeah, but... Uh, all the reports, and now we have studies that are showing that this is actually the case. All the reports are coming back that when people use it, they reduce their, their all anything that they have habits of using. And Dr. Seeds thinks it has to do with that it literally heals the brain. Yeah. And so, um, and so he thinks that it's going to be used for things like depression, hmm. for, you know, for cognitive function. I... I think someone like you should try it because you're always looking to to reduce inflammation in the in the brain. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, uh, like so, Solank, um, C Max, uh, Dihexa, like that's yeah. like sort of my combo right yeah, now. Yeah. But like, I would totally be open to trying that. I would I talk to the MP hormones people <clears throat> yeah. and ask them what they think about that. You know, talking about our partners, I, we gotta share this with the audience. I thought was so funny. Um, so. One of the things that we get asked to do a lot with a lot of our partners is to um, do like product shots. And it's like, oh, yeah. Katrina's job is to manage the partners <laughs> and she negotiates the deals every year. And every year when we renegotiate deals for the next year, everybody, you know, has their things that they want. Oh, you know, I wish the guys would do this and can we get them to do that and this, that. And for the most part, we're pretty resistant yeah, of everything, no. right? We're pretty stubborn. <laughs> like, listen, we've agreed to a deal. We'll talk about the product on the show when we use it, stuff like that. It is what it is. And then, but you know, of course they, they, their job is to want more and do that stuff. And Katrina, of course, is trying to call, close contracts and do those deals and so she's always frustrated with us because she's like listen i yeah. could get this deal if you guys would just be willing to do this or that and so 
So anyways, uh, we had, we had did this deal with Organifi. Organifi is one of, we are more flexible with them because they've been with us for like seven years, right? That's yeah, one yeah. of our first big partners, one of our biggest Main contracts. Partner. And yeah. we love them. And we love them. We, right? love, we love Drew. Drew like, yeah. so, and so Drew goes, Hey, you know, the Sheila Jeet's killing it. So like that, can I get some product photos with you guys? And then Katrina get Katrina agrees without even talking to us because she knows how we feel about Organifi. And then you know we come in last week and we get this like, hey, you guys got to do some like, <laughs> yeah, do these photos. And it's so funny. And it's almost, because, it's like, you know, by the way, we're getting paid to do this, and then yeah. but we still have this like fuck it attitude. Like we're gonna do stupid like, we stuff. Do what? Yeah. So <laughs> so we do this obnoxious. She's just did photo shoot. Yeah. Justin climbs in a fucking tree. Yeah. I'm posing in You're front of like on a, like, a, <laughs> like a beater. Yeah. Beat up Honda. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know, Sal's doing weird stuff in the Sal's gym. Flexible, uh, yeah. So you know, and and so then I then we do them right, and then Doug sends them with Katrina. Katrina is like so mad. She's just like, "What are these? We can't use these." <laughs> Send the, and we're like, fuck it, send it over there, yeah. right? I See bet what they, they say. I bet so, they loved it. They do. So See? she, they send they it over, it. and that, so and I had to have this talk with Katrina because remember, Katrina's not on social media. Yeah. So some of this stuff she's not completely aware of. So sometimes like this, like this is where there's a little bit of a disconnect. She's like, I don't understand why you guys are so fucking resistant to this. Like she's all mad at me and yeah. stuff. I said, you have to understand that this is something that we've talked about at the beginning since the beginning of the show that we cannot stand. Like the, this, these influencers that yeah. they're showing, I said, honey, they do like things where they have like, Product placement, a, like a, a pre-workout in their Lamborghini. Yeah. Like <laughs> never do that. If you shake it, shake it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You should you're get, an idiot. You should get punched in the face. Morning you routine. Have, wee, wee, wee. You have a $150,000, $300,000 whip. It has no business with powder inside of it. Like you should get punched <laughs> in the face for that. Right. Yeah. Or leaning on it or posing in front of it. Like it has nothing to do with working out or right? like so so you have to understand that when people ask for that I, a lot of times the guys and i we look at it like this is what people want they want more of this social media bullshit and i'm like we don't want to do it so then we go the other extreme yeah. so she's like okay so i kind of get it so then she's like explaining like hey just want to apologize the, the guys did this is what they gave you <laughs> and they're just really <laughs> they, they, they like the, she's they, all of course they did the one where justin's feeding you and i'm behind you yeah, like, spotting so, you. Oh so God. So, uh, so that one made me really. But now that she knows, okay, now that she knows, and she's so now she's like communicating to the partners, and they're like, "Hey, love it. Let them do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. Like that's what we love about the guys. Like they're their own. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So, so, but now there's that's like we love them. There's better. Yeah. There's there's a better understanding. Katrina wasn't understanding that like this connection. She thought we were just being stubborn assholes about like not. I'm like you. You have to know that like this is like so cringe for us. It's also on brand. I mean, it would look fake if our yeah, if our audience yeah, yeah, saw yeah, these yeah. fake. Photos of us acting, trying to act differently. Yeah, You're like what is that? You yeah. gotta mock ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah dude. Make fun yeah. Of so look, I look forward. For it's the, really clowning on ourselves. Keep an eye out is. for the Sheila Jeet for oh, commercials. It's, for it's yeah. fire, you guys. It's at a high it's tree. Yeah. <laughs> dude, did you see my arms after that? The yeah. next day, I had just like scratches uh, everywhere. Bro, you're so dude, what happened to you? Oh god, this yeah, guy. Yeah. Oh, no regard for a safety. Forgot I climbed a tree just randomly. So the, the the shout out will be the uh, leapfrog books for all the parents out there. So shout Good out stuff. for the, the parents. Like check out the leap the, the leapfrog books. All right, look. By now you know that probiotics, if used properly, can improve your health, improve your digestion, reduce inflammation. They may even help with anxiety and depression. At least that's what the studies show. Anyway, there's a company called Seed that makes the world's best probiotic. All other probiotics pale in comparison. This is the latest and greatest when it comes to cutting-edge science and technology for probiotics, beneficial bacteria that improve your health. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump with no space for 25% off your first month's order of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Caitlin from California. Hi, Caitlin. How can we help you? Hello. How are you guys doing? We're good. doing good. How are, How are you doing? Good morning. Doing good. Um, first off, just want to say thank you guys for talking to me today. Um, my friend Katie introduced me to you guys a couple years ago, and I've been a fan and a listener ever since, and really appreciate all your guys' advice. Thank awesome. you so much. How can we help? So um, I um, am like that client you guys have talked about that I seem to have been on a diet like my whole life. And now that I've tried to actually do things the right way, um, I haven't seen any movement in fat loss or weight loss. So um, to give a little background, I started my first diet in sixth grade doing Weight Watchers. Um, 
it was successful, lost weight super easily. And that, you know, cycle kind of continued on um, for years, just, you know, slowly gaining the weight back and then cutting calories and the whole thing. And um, then led up until, you know, into my 20s doing the same thing. And then when was somewhere in my 20s, I did like, you know, this six week 20 pound weight loss boot camp. Couldn't lose 20 pounds, but did pretty, pretty okay. But immediately, you know, it wasn't long term. Like it was such a short term process. And um, so finally, uh, leading up to my wedding, um, cut calories again. And then after that, it seemed like once I got settled back from the honeymoon, uh, I finally like weighed myself after like a few months or whatever. I wasn't trying to stress about that. And my weight had gone up like 10 pounds. And I was like, okay, like maybe I'm just, you know, fluctuating, um, getting back from the honeymoon, things like that. But it seemed like a lot. And so from there, I was just so sick of cutting calories and not eating enough. And so I was like, I just want to do this right. So starting last January, I, um, bought a walking pad for my desk at work so I could get in, you know, at least 10,000 steps while I was at work that day. And then, um, I set myself water goals. I was drinking like 80 to hundred ounces of waters a day, of water a day. Um, I, I've always done strength training, um, ever since I stopped going to the boot camp, which was obviously hit workouts, but I, um, my work as a gym. So since 2021, I worked in the gym, worked out in the gym, um, Mondays, Monday through Thursday. Um, and then we even have a trainer in the gym on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And, uh, last January I hired a virtual health coach, um, that she created me food plans. And so I was like, okay, that's probably just the missing piece. It's just the diet. So I went, I did that with her until like August, almost September. And I couldn't lose more than like two to three pounds. And so with her, um, my calories, I think she started me at like 1900 calories. And after like a month or so, I was like, Hey, can we drop the calories? Like just not seeing any difference. So she wanted to slowly drop it to 17. Um, and my, I was getting about 124 grams of protein, 187 grams of carbs and 48 grams of fat a day. Um, and still just was not seeing any results. Um, on top of that, I get good sleep. I sleep like seven, eight hours a night. Um, not very stressed. The only thing that honestly stresses me out is not losing weight. <laughs> and um, I even like tested all my hormones and got off birth control, that whole thing. And, you know, kind of waited. It's almost been a year off of that and didn't really see any change from that either. So I was just seeing if you guys had any advice, if you can tell, you know, from your outside opinion, if there's something I'm doing wrong, if something else I should be doing, or I would just love some advice. Yeah. Well, I, first I want to, um, tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry you had to go through that since sixth grade and this kind of up and down. That's a really challenging thing to deal with at, you know, sixth grade, you're probably 11 years old. Um, and that set a lot of things kind of, kind of cemented, uh, certain behaviors or feelings you maybe had, uh, about yourself. Um, I can tell you what's happening physiologically, but it's not going to fix the problem. Um, this is, this is coming from something else. And I think it's a place that you're probably, either resistant to look at or haven't tackled a hundred percent yet. Okay. Um, physiologically, your body's resistant to losing weight because you've, you've played this game so many times where you've cut your calories <clears throat> and lost some weight and then, you know, kind of came out of it a little bit and tried to live a normal life or what felt normal and the weight comes back. And <clears throat> so your body now is, uh, physiologically is afraid of losing weight unless you drop your calories to an unsustainable level that can be reversed physiologically. It'll take a little bit of time. Okay. But that can be reversed physiologically. Now the, the root issue here, um, which, you know, we could start to touch on right now. Let me ask you, what's the main goal for you through this? I, I, and, and you're going to say weight loss, but what's the feeling you're looking for? Um, I mean, 
I just, I feel like since I gained the weight, my self-confidence has gone down a lot. So obviously some more confidence, just feeling better overall. So you want to feel good? Yeah. Good about yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think you're, you're worthy of feeling like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, congratulations. You, you, you can feel that way. You can feel that way right now. And I'm telling you this because if we don't, if we don't get there, this battle, this struggle is always going to be a battle. It's going to, it's always going to elude you this, this goal, this focus. Here's the other side of it that I want you to think about because you're telling us a lot of like, you've been working with a trainer and you're working with a nutrition coach. And I, and I, by the way, at the end of this, I'll tell you what I think you should do uh, when it comes to your approach. Um, but, but uh, like I said, I don't think that's, that's really the root issue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> during that process of strength training and you're doing traditional strength training, right? Like you do a set rest, mm -hmm. do a set. Okay. Besides yeah. the, the scale, besides the weight loss and the disappointment around that, are there any other changes or things that you've noticed in yourself that you can think of that are positive or good? Um, consistency, never giving up. Um, what about physically? Do you feel stronger? Yeah. I mean, I, I broke my wrist in September and was literally already back in the gym two days later. Awesome. Like I didn't let it stop me. Um, I feel really strong. I don't feel like weak at all. Um, How's your energy? And I feel like I keep getting stronger, you know, but just no changes. It, there's no but here. This is independent of the, of the other goal that you have. Okay. Do you mm -hmm. feel more energy? Yeah, I have great energy. Good. So I want you to start to focus on, cause there's a, there's a whole basket of uh, benefits that can come from starting to take care of yourself in a, in a good way. And one of those things, and it's a very small thing is that your body fat percentage or your weight starts to reflect it. But what happens is we focus so heavily on that one thing and we ignore the other stuff that we create this distorted view of our progress. So you may look at the last year and see that the weight hasn't changed. And you may say to yourself, that's a complete failure. Um, but, it, but that's not correct. That's not accurate. You might have gotten stronger. Your energy might be better. You might have achieved a new consistency. You might start to change your attitude towards exercise and maybe yourself. So there's all those amazing things. Now, why am I talking about that? Because if, if you don't place your focus there, no matter what I'm about to tell you will not work. Okay. It's just not going to work. I can give you the perfect answer right now. And I promise you it won't work if you don't do that first, because you're not going to get what you think you're, what you think you want from the scale going down. So you may actually get to that goal and then you may, and then you're going to find yourself with this, like, uh, you know, I hit my goal, but it's not what I thought. And I don't feel the same and what's going on. And I'm going to go back again and I'm going, you might never be a conscious, not might not even be a conscious thing now. All right. What would the approach be? Probably what you've heard us say many times, a slow reverse diet, focusing on building strength, focusing on athletic performance in the gym, throwing the scale away, not weighing yourself and giving your body a chance to speed up its metabolism, giving your body a chance to get into a place where then you can lose weight and keep it off sustainably. I have a question. Um, you, you mentioned that you had a trainer who put you at 1900 calories and you guys weren't really moving, uh, weight loss. And then you, then you had her cut you down to 17. When was the last time you would say you had, you were eating 2,400 calories or, or more consistently? Um, I don't know if I've ever put it that high. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We, we just need to, we need to reverse diet and focus on strength and not not worry about being at 2,300, 2,400 calories. That's not going to put on, if you're lifting weights, you're walking like you are, you're getting good sleep and we're eating 23, 2,400 calories. Uh, even if you see weight on the scale, stay the same or go up, you're, you're not putting fat on. I promise that you're not getting fatter from that. So getting rid of the scale, which you've probably heard us say a million times on this podcast is definitely something that I would suggest that you do. And then Sal's right. The advice is, you know, and I, I don't know if you're following a maps program. I know you're, you're following, have you followed any of our programs yet? 
Mm -mm. Okay, that's the other thing we're going to solve. Because sometimes you, you you know, and I don't know this trainer or who's got your program. I mean, it may be simply changing your workout more appropriate to what you need, really focusing on getting strong, getting your calories up to where they need to be and keeping them there consistent and not allowing, oh my God, the scale hasn't gone down in a month. I, I must have to lower my calories. It doesn't work that way. I mean, and this is, it's interesting that, uh, uh, that we've met you right now. You actually remind me of my very last client that I ever chose to take on when I was in the, when I was still training clients. And I took her on because she had an almost identical story as you did. And in addition to that, she had a kinesiology degree and was a nurse. So she knew her shit, right? So I was like, okay. I have a master's in public health too. Oh, okay. So this is like, you, you guys literally would be just best of friends. You guys actually kind of look alike too. It's kind of great. So you guys, this girl, Tracy, and I actually took her on because she she told her story just like you. And I'm like, oh, this will be a challenge for me. This will be a good good client for me now. And it and it took us a while to to get to get this mindset. And and I just the advice Sal gave is exactly what I had her do. Is just I just want you to keep walking. We're gonna get strong. I I, I weighed her, but I made her turn around so I could just see. And the only reason why I wanted to see the scale weight is just because I wanted to monitor as I was increasing calories. But I wouldn't let her see it. And mm -hmm. I had to just. And it did take us a got a good six months of staying in this kind of reverse diet before she started to feel like she was moving in the right direction. Now I knew we were building muscle and I knew she was getting better, but she didn't feel that way. She just felt like, Oh, I just have this layer of fat on me. I can't, I don't see like I'm getting any progress, but I knew we were because we were seeing strength gains in the gym. She was getting stronger. I was feeding her more than she'd ever eaten before. And that was the goal. We were just, and I got her all the way up to about 2,600 calories before I let her reverse back the other way. And then we came back down to 21 and she actually started to see like her first like weight loss that felt easy to her for the first time ever. I put her at a calorie place that she had never been high. It was hot. That would be considered high for her. And she saw the weight coming off. And that was all I needed to do to get her to believe in me that this is the process. And then we actually went back to reversing and adding more calories and no more weight loss. But I gave her that little diet break so she could see, look at what you've accomplished already. We got you to 2,600 calories. You didn't feel like you've really done anything, but I'm telling you, you put some muscle on, you sped your metabolism up. Then I brought her down to 2,100 and she just started to drop. I mean, she dropped weight better than she'd ever done before. And it was really just for me to say, look at, this is what we're doing. Okay. We're building this metabolism up from years and year, decades of you eating in this kind of yo-yo diet pattern. I've got to break that from you and we got to break those habits. And so <clears throat> long story short, she ended up losing like a hundred pounds with me, but it wow. took, it did take, it did take us a long time. It really did. Now, luckily I had the wherewithal to know, to show her what we were doing and she was smart and she understood like, okay, I get it. I trust you now. And once I had that trust, then it was just a matter of chipping away. Cause she, like you, was disciplined, consistent, smart, and exactly same story. This happened from sixth grade. You know, her parents put her on a on a weight loss program, and then ever since then she's battled. She battled with it, and she has an athletic background. She played softball. She was she was active. So it was a it was a major challenge for us. But a lot of it was the the, the mental hurdle of getting past that. I'm putting this work in, and I need to see this consistent weight loss. So I, I mean, I'm thinking anabolic. Are you thinking? Yeah, maps mm -hmm. anabolic would be a great, absolute, the perfect routine for you. You can maintain your walking. I think that's perfectly fine. It's good for you. It's uh, you know, trying to move to burn calories, <laughs> lose weight is not a, a, it's not a very successful approach. But from a health perspective, which is what we want, I think that's that's going to be. Uh, I really I, good. I also heard you say that you like you have this kind of Monday through Thursday routine in the gym. Um, I I just I want to encourage you to you've probably heard me say this when the weekends is make a real conscious effort that um you know just because you do great monday through thursday or monday through friday to not kind of let yourself be like oh i won't worry about you know exactly tracking on the weekend or oh maybe that'll be when i take off i actually want you to shift your focus on those weekend days as the priority and if you take a day off in the gym or you don't do something make it in the weekday that'll help That'll help also with consistency and heading the right direction is have the attitude of win the weekend, follow the MAPS anabolic program. And I'd like you to increase your calories and not weigh, not, uh, not get on the scale. And I'd like to see like 2,100, like right now. Yeah. Kate, okay. Kate, Caitlin, are you in our forum? No. Okay. I'm going to put you in there for support. And then is it feasible for you to work with someone that can help coach you with your relationship to yourself. Cause this is a very important piece of the puzzle. Most trainers and diet coaches aren't, 
uh, well versed in this. Some are, but very rarely. It's pretty rare to find someone that can do this as well. I think it would be very beneficial for you to meet with someone once a week. Um, typically, it's a therapist, and you approach them with this pro with this specific issue and say, "Look, here's a deal. I've I've struggled with dieting on and off, and you know body image issues, or or just pers just a relationship with myself." This is really hard for me. They're not going to give you a diet. They're not going to give you a workout, but they're going to work on the piece that's leading to all of these, these challenges. And then just to kind of back up with what Adam's saying, you know, our bodies are incredible adaptation machines. And if you've dieted on and off since you were 11, your body expects it to keep happening. And what it's learned to do is become very resistant to weight loss from dropping calories. This is not permanent. This is not permanent, but it's resistant, which means it's going to take a little while. So if you really, if you want to solve this forever, if you're like, look, I'm done with this. Like I, you look very young, but you've probably been dealing with this for a little while since you were in sixth grade. So you look like you're in your early twenties. If Thanks, I'm 30. Okay. So, oh, wow. all right, well, there you go. You look great. So, okay. So you've been dealing with this for almost 20 years. Uh, I, it's like, if you're done with this, you're like, look, I don't want to live my life dealing with this shit anymore. I want it to be done. I want to be fixed. I want this to be over. You have to do this differently. That does, that means it's not the diet and the workout. The diet and the workout are the small part of it. The big part of it is what is the root? What is the reason why your relationship with yourself is causing you so much challenge and struggle around this? And why is it so hard for you to accept yourself mm -hmm. through these different stages? Why is it that you only feel good when the scale is going down and you feel bad when the scale is going up? And why is your happiness so tied to this arbitrary number that is reflected when you stand on this, you know, digital machine or whatever? So if you could find somebody, I, I really, really recommend this. I, I have worked with clients who have also simultaneously worked with therapists who've done this. And it was the most, the most successful approach I ever had is when, when there was a combination of me, trainer, diet, therapist, and the clients that did this were like, it was, I mean, it was like, I knew we were going to succeed. I knew it. So if you can do that, yeah, that's going to be the most powerful thing. That'll be the most powerful thing that you do. It's going to be tough because, uh, it, you're going to have to, you're going to have to go through it, whatever it is that you're avoiding, you got to go through it, but mm -hmm. that's the only way. That's the only way. And if you're ready for it, then that's, the, that's what I highly recommend. Awesome. I could definitely do that. Okay. I think that would help. Yes. And then check awesome. in, check in with us in the forum, please. I'd, I'd love to hear okay. uh, little updates every couple yes. weeks from you, letting us know how, how the strength and what I care about is how you feel your strength, how the workouts are going. That's and go the in there with your challenges. There's a lot of people in there that are, that will post stuff like this. So be like, Oh my God, guys, I've been doing this for two months. I know I'm moving in the right direction. I'm so frustrated though. I still feel like, Oh, I got to lose. Like what? And then you'll get people who will get on there who, who are like, Oh, I did the same thing two years ago. Here's why I am now. It's totally worth it type of deal very supportive so yeah. please, please post in there please get in there awesome definitely thank you guys so much all right you got it caitlin thank look you so much look for forward time. to it caitlin thank you thank you it's calls like that that make me want to train people again. she well she's a hundred percent yeah i mean damn near like spot on even age age ever looks like her this girl tracy good who's become a good friend of mine um who I was done training clients. I was just doing management, stuff like that. And I had already had my handful of people that I took care of that I had for years. You know how that is when you get yeah. that. And <clears throat> I hadn't taken a client in a while. And I was, you know, she came, she was at the, and she, I heard her story just like this, except the only difference was Tracy was also playing softball, rec ball, and was a nurse moving all yeah, day. Just so, couldn't figure it out. And just couldn't yeah. figure it out. And just smart and, and same thing. She's told me that her, since she was in sixth grade, yeah. she had battled, mm -hmm. and her parents put her on a Weight Watchers thing. Same thing. But, I, you know, I just want to remind her, it did take us a long time, man. It really did. It was one of the longer, like, uh, success stories that I ever had. And, and a lot of that was getting her to trust the process and allow me to, to build a metabolism, to yep. break through these... You know, as soon as I get frustrated, I don't feel like I can go anywhere. I want to cut calories. That's why I want her to work with someone because uh, she could take our advice, but not having someone there it's to help hurdle. bring her back yeah. to like, here's what you need to do. 
it's going to be very hard to do. She's so stuck in this pattern, you know? It's been yeah, with her for years. Yeah, a lot of times addressing that negative self-talk and that self-sabotaging kind of behavior, like, you're not going to, you're going to keep spinning your tires until you really face that. And I think that this is a conversation I've had with a lot of my friends who've gone through this process where it's like you do everything and you're you're really on track and you're still not breaking through. I, I do I do want to let her know though something because I, I you guys are your advice is spot on. But I do something that was really interesting about Tracy also was and she kind of reminds me of this. She didn't come off like uh she didn't have this trauma. She didn't really beat herself up. She has a great fucking attitude and personality. Like yeah. she used to joke about like mm -hmm. us, like her weight. No, I don't give a shit. Sure, this, sure, that. Sure. She had a great attitude and had great spirit and just the it, wrong formula. She yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wrong formula and for also so probably for just, so long. And that's probably exciting also if that's the case. Right? It, yeah. And often now you just change it up. Yeah, yeah. and often they, they, you disconnect from the bad feelings because on top of everything else, you're like, I'm good. Right, that's right. Great. And, ah. that, and, and that could have easily been yeah. true, right? Like just I don't think I. She doesn't realize it. What about that? But I mean. Because I, I don't want her to get hung up on thinking like, oh, there, there's this trauma that I have to have no, buried no, no, or there's some issue. The trauma is, first of all, maybe there is, but if yeah, there yeah. isn't, this is the trauma. Yeah. The yeah. trauma is I went on a diet when I was 11. Right. I tied myself worth to it. Yeah, no, I totally. keep failing. It's been 20 years of this struggle. Well, and it was that's the trauma. from parents telling yes. her there was a problem, right? So yeah. that's going to stick with you. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. Our next caller is Brian from New Jersey. Brian, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, how you guys doing? Good, man. Hey, man. What's going on? Good. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying uh, I'm 38 years old now. I've been working out, dieting on and off for a long time. And uh, before listening to your guys' show, I was never really sure if what I was doing was correct or not. So that always led to me giving up just due to the uncertainty. But uh, with the knowledge that I've gained from listening to you guys, I just feel so confident in what I'm doing. Uh, I just trust the process now. Because of that, um, I'm like I'm the most fit and healthy that I've ever been in my whole life. So I just wanted to thank Hell you. Hell yeah! Awesome. Hell yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> um, so I'll just I'll read the, my question. Uh, so during the work week for me, it's very easy to stay on track with macros. Um, going into every weekend, I have every intention of eating clean, but with all the variables that the weekend brings, I almost never succeed. I'm also the type of person that once I make one but one bad decision food wise, that just makes me spiral the rest of the weekend um i still have a pretty fast metabolism so i'm able to justify to myself every weekend that you know i'll just make up for it in the following week and uh, i've able to have some success this way but i've definitely hit a plateau now um my ultimate goal is just to be you know mobile fit and healthy for myself and to set an example for my kids so i don't necessarily want to you know follow a, a strict diet seven days a week but at the same time I am aware that the relationship I have with food isn't the best and uh, this isn't, it also isn't the healthiest approach. So I'm hoping you guys can uh, share some tips or tricks to help me get out of this cycle and have a more balanced lifestyle. Oh, I love, yeah. I love yeah. this and I have the answer for you, bro. Yep. Yep. So All right. one, uh, if you haven't heard me say it already, the win the weekend thing was a big, was a big thing for me. It was a massive uh, shift in my fitness journey was, saying not telling myself i can't have the pizza or the beer every once in a while or not saying i can't have a thing of ice cream just saying it's not going to happen on the weekends on the weekends i'm going to win i'm going to win the weekends and then if i still have these cravings or things i want to enjoy every once in a while i would so that's a psychological piece first of all right so it's not me saying i can't have these foods it's just me saying i got to win the weekend win the weekend my, my weekends are going to be my best fitness days so and, okay. and and then because it's only two days, it should be you're just don't focus on the rest of the week. It's Literally. also the least structured days of the week, which yes. is what makes it uh, that's the hardest to stay good. Is because the weekends you don't got you got time to do whatever type of deal. That's right. So and and you're gonna be more active, moving with work and everything like that throughout the week. So it's be, it's better served to put that food on there. And what you end up finding out is oh shit, like you know that pizza I thought I wanted. I don't really want it. I had a great day today. I moved around. I worked, and then you pass on it a lot of times. And then occasionally you do enjoy it, which is okay. It's okay to have that yeah. balance like that. Another tip too is is make sure the shit's not in your house, right? So get it, get the foods out of you, out of your house. And then the last, the third one, which is, and by the way, a lot of what this is is like I feel so connected to this question because this is how I have thought about my relationship with food. It's also what has worked for me was the motivation on the kids' part. So, and that's what keeps me eating. I don't want, cause I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't know you, I don't know if you know this, but I didn't let Max have sugar for like the first three years of his life. Like I was really, really disciplined on his food that he got to eat. 
And so then my attitude was, I'm not going to tell my kid he can't have all these things and then I'm going to go eat all this, binge on this stuff on the weekend. So the thing that motivates me to stay dialed nutritionally in my house is that, is that my son's always watching me and kids are, kids rarely do what you tell them to do. They do what they see from you. And so the motivation is to let him see dad making these whole foods and, and eating good around him and stuff like that all the time, especially on the weekend when you're probably with him more or her more, you're spending more time with your kids during that time than probably the work week. So allow them to see you making all these good, and you don't even have to tell them to eat good. They just see dad eating this way. That's how Max has learned. Like he eats what mom and dad eats. It's not weird that he doesn't eat what a lot of these other kids eat because he eats what his family eats all the time. So that's how I've reframed the discipline around my relationship with food is that I know he is always watching me. He's always watching what I'm doing. And so I want to give him the best example around nutritional habits. So those have been the big, big ones for me that win the weekend, He's, he's all, he's always, he's always watching me and I'm not telling myself I can't have those things. I'm just shifting it over. Like if I really want to have those things, I'll enjoy it on the weekdays. And I know what happens is I end up yeah. passing on it more often than not. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, re I'll restate it uh, exactly what Adam said, but differently. Okay. Just kind of hit it home. Uh, uh, and I'm going to kind of paint the context here. You're fit. You're 38. You're six, one, it says here between nine to 12% body fat. You're doing a great job. So you don't have any specific goals. The specific question is balance. Well, the balance is actually in your question or the imbalance is in your question. I do well, let me change the word well with perfect during the week and then the weekend I go off. The, the lack of balance is not the weekend. The weekend is a symptom of the lack of balance during the week. So okay. it's, it's the week that you don't have the balance. Mm -hmm. During the week, you're... You're restricting you're or, or, or so regimented that the weekend comes and you rebel against yourself. So it's not the weekend that's out of balance. The weekend is a symptom of the the cause, which is the week. Yep, yep, 100%. Yep. So if the Nailed week it. becomes a little looser, the weekend will no longer be that symptom of rebellion. So, And this is all a psychological game that you're playing yep. with yourself. It's so funny how this works because... Sal's a, right on. Yeah. You're so dialed during the Strict week binge. and then you let off on the weekends and be, and it's this, uh, you rebel against yourself. And just by giving you the freedom that go ahead have that piece of pizza or have that beer during the week, just mentally giving you that freedom, you'll be blown away by how often you don't choose to do it because you already got great momentum. You had a great week. And, but because you're telling yourself you could, you don't feel that need to rebel on the weekend. It's wild how this works, but mm -hmm. I promise you, if you go into it with that mindset, he's it's saying- It's very common. Yes. It's very, very common, Brian. Are you- Yeah, do, it, makes, it makes sense. Do, are you the kind of person, Brian, where if somebody sell, tells you, don't do that, there's a PC that wants to do it? Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So I can yeah. identify with yeah. that. So we all, we all, This, is why, this is why it's going to work so well yeah. for you, bro. This so you, so <laughs> now, the, now the person telling you not to do something is you. Yeah. So yeah. you're the one telling yourself, don't, 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 don't. And then you're like, okay, 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 okay. And then the weekend comes, you're like, fuck you. And yeah. then you go off. <laughs> yeah. So you got to, the, the, the lack of balance is, is Monday through Friday. How old are the kids? Sunday. How old are the kids? Uh, I have three girls, seven, five, and two. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, well, yeah. God bless you. Three girls, huh? Yeah. yeah. Woo. And there definitely is something to what you were saying. Um, I mean, they've definitely picked up on, you know, how we, we try and have, you know, you know, organic clean foods in the house. And, um, now they used to say that they, you know, um, we were eating weird, but now their mentality has changed and now they're all about being healthy. And yeah, so there is something we don't push it on them. We just do what we do and they watch. Brian, you, you must, uh, you must've been a playboy in your twenties. All my friends, all my friends that had three girls were like playboys in their twenties. So God has this weird way yeah, like, uh, of teaching us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let, let me let me let me give you one more. Let me just awesome irony. let me again rephrase what I said in a different way because I, I find that when I when I when we can do this, it starts to click more and more. Okay, so you heard Adam, yeah. you heard what I said. Okay, mm -hmm. now take the food that you have on the weekend. Okay, whatever. Think of the last weekend where you kind of did this. Now imagine if you took that food and you spread it out throughout the week and you took all the clean food that you had and you replaced some of the stuff on the weekend. So it no longer looked like perfect off. It looked balanced all week. Do you feel the difference? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cause, yeah, it cause, makes sense. Because obviously the calories and everything's fine. You're lean, you're healthy, you're yeah. fit. 
What you're struggling with is on off. So imagine if that weekend was sprinkled through, through the week and the week was sprinkled through the weekend. Now it feels balanced. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I've never really tried that. I've always just tried to compensate during the week no. yeah. for the mistakes I made during the weekend and just puts me in the same cycle over and over. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You're That's punishing right. yourself. Yeah. By the way, it's, you're, you're doing a great job identifying that. Yeah, a lot of people don't even identify that 100%, feeling. 100%. 100%. Especially you, not somebody fit like you. Are you following any of our MAPS programs right now? Uh, not right now. I've done uh, a couple of them before. Anabolic, I've done anywhere. I've done a couple of them, but not right now. I'm just doing um like a body part split right now. What are your goals? I mean, just to be strong and lean as I can, you know, mobile, healthy. I don't really have anything specific. Do you like fun? Do you like fun, different kind of plus. exercises? Mm. I was thinking yeah. strong. Oh, uh, what, what about old time? Old time's oh, all right. Yeah. That's way different. I yeah. Yeah. Map strong first. <laughs> He's running which, split. That's like Which one way. you want, map strong or old time? Which which one's the more fun one? You were saying the, the uh, different. Well, that's, well, uh, that's like old time. Different, yeah, that's yeah. old time. Oh, that's that's going to be really different. Yeah, so. that'll make your, that'll give you a crazy strong core, grip, shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like I, the way that guy. It's the way that strength athletes worked out during very the challenging, but super fun. To, oh, it's to get it's a rad it. workout. Yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds interesting to me. I like that. Sounds of that. Right, you got it, man. It. We'll yeah. send it over to you. I right, appreciate it. All right, All brother. Brian. Good, Good luck. On, God bless All you right. when they're teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. You got Take it easy, man. Yeah, it's, isn't that funny? Like, uh, so common, right? Mm -hmm. But and, and the reason why I wanted to say it so many different ways is people listening. Some people got the first one. Some people got the second time. By the, by the time you get to the third explanation, like, oh, okay, that is balanced. Yeah, balanced is not you know all. Well, I off. mean, even influencers will will account for the fact that you can be like super regimented during the week, but they allow this cheat day or yeah. they allow this like just, sort of it, symptom it eruption to yep. occur, and it's just like a repeatable pattern. And so I could see how like you know this is something that like you at least he noticed that and he identified that because a lot of people don't even see that. Let me say it. Again. I'll say it again in a different way. <laughs> Imagine if you had a person who had no alcohol Monday through yeah. Friday. Yeah. Saturday had seven glasses of wine like every Saturday. Drunk. Yeah, Every Saturday, seven glasses of wine. Now imagine if that same person had a glass of wine every night for with dinner. dinner. Yeah. Very, very different behavior. Totally very, different very different attachment. Yeah. That's what, that's, not that's to what mention what organically happens when you give yourself the freedom to do that. You, end up doing you decide less. not to have a yes. class every night. It goes less, less, yeah, less. You're like, oh, I don't feel like it tonight. 100%. That's, what, what, that's the crazy part about this is once you once you get a hold of the, the reverse psychology, I guess you could say you're having with this, it, it, you end up having better habits and better relationship with the food anyways. Our next caller is Viviana from Peru. Hi, Viviana. How can we help you? Hi. Hello. Oh, hello. my God. All right. Um, hello? Yeah, <laughs> we're here, we're here. Yeah, we didn't go we got, we got you. I'm too far away. All right. Um, guys, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are actually real. <laughs> um, super excited, super excited. Um, okay, so I'll get to my question and then some context. Um, my question is, should I cut, build, reverse? Like, what do I do right now? What I would like to know, like, what my first and probably next few steps for this next year should look like. Um, first of all, I love, I absolutely love fitness. I love lifting. I love all that. I think it's not a matter of, um, dreading working out, but I have been over the last 20 or so years, very inconsistent with, um, training, very inconsistent with my nutrition. I just turned 41. Um, and I've always been, I know I would always train like three, six, maybe nine months stop for like that same amount of time and then do it again and just go in cycles like that. And I know it's really, um, I have this, this issue with like all or nothing mindset. I have had some destructive behaviors in the past. I did overcome a eating disorder. Uh, thank God I, I, I overcame it. Um, so, but that's led me to like be, uh, lose and gain the same, I don't know, maybe 25 to 30 pounds, like maybe five or six times in the last uh, 20 years. Um, so in March, of last year so march 2023 i got a mommy makeover i got tummy tuck and all that jazz my core looks amazing but i am still at around like 33 percent body fat which is very high i know um i started um anabolic late october of uh, last year i got up to um starting phase three but i had to start um had to stop because i got surgery um like mid-december and I wasn't allowed to lift. So I just got the okay to start lifting again. Um, and so in the last couple of weeks, I've been really working on my sleep. 
Um, I started taking magnesium and ashwagandha and I started working on my mindset a lot, um, working with a coach and a therapist. Um, but my body fat is still high. Um, and I just, I just want to look, <laughs> I want to look like I work out and I want to look mean and strong and, and fit. I don't want to be skinny cause I'm not, I, uh, it's not my uh, body type, I guess. I'd love to be like around low twenties, 20, 22% body fat. And um, especially like have structure around, around fitness and, and nutrition. So, and I'm ready and I'm willing and I'm able. So whatever you say, I'll do <laughs> a couple, couple more things in here too. One, I want to know where you're at calorie wise right now. I see you also are dealing with potentially IBS and then also are you yeah, so, uh, becoming a trainer too? Yeah. You're, you're a, you're a nutrition coach. It said. I know. And I feel a little ashamed about that because no, no don't be ashamed. I, all this, no, all of ninety ninety percent of trainers, okay, are, are <laughs> just just like you, or that's what drove us to this. So right. yeah, 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 don't feel ashamed yeah. at all. Yeah, part of you there, I'm sure. Yeah, no, that's definitely what drove me to. Like, I used to read and read and read and just consume so much information that I decided to get um, certified. Uh, both in nutrition and in training. I have trained um, clients and have gotten great results with them. It's kind of like, I see them, I'm like, ooh, you need this, this, and that. And, and, they, and they do it and that's great, but I can't do it. Like I can't <laughs> do it on myself. I'm having oh. such a hard time with that. Um, I, my IBS issues uh, were diagnosed like um, around, I, I guess, November or so last year. And it's gotten a lot better. Um, I kind of find out what foods are triggering it. So kind of under control not not a big deal um so but yeah what would you if you trained yourself what would you what would you have you do can you do that can you separate yourself and give yourself advice have you tried that so yes um i usually what i what i do is i kind of plan out the year let's say and i say okay this is going to be my cut phase and my build phase and this is the program i'm going to follow and i and i kind of lay it all out on paper it looks beautiful wonderful like i would have it framed but then i end up not doing it because i second guess myself like mm. i it's like a lot of self-doubt like is is this the right thing i also think i suffer from a very s severe syndrome called shiny object syndrome yeah, like, of course a new thing comes out I'm like Ooh, that's what i should do you yeah. know yeah. <laughs> viviana yeah. the so, only the only time yeah. i ever plan out a year of training for someone is when i'm trying to sell them a year's worth of personal training so that <laughs> i can get them to kind of commit get an idea of what Buy it looks it. <laughs> what it may look like ask me how many times yeah. i've ever stuck to the plan with a client never because things never, happen that. <laughs> yeah that doesn't work that way so um so you can't do that for yourself so so that's i want you to answer my question again if you were your own client and your client came to you and asked you that question, should I cut? Should I reverse? What should I do right now? What do you, what would you tell yourself? So right now, knowing that, um, their maintenance calories are around 21 or 2200. Um, if I were not emotionally attached to this person, I would tell them, um, to kind of work on getting their calories or their maintenance calories a little bit higher um so that a cut would be less or or there's more possibility of adherence to a cut you know cutting yeah. on, on higher calories yeah, that, that would be my that's the right answer sounds like you're a pretty good trainer already <laughs> that's that's the right answer <laughs> yeah. okay so what's the emotional component what's the part that's stopping you from from doing you said if i wasn't emotionally connected what, what's stopping you i think um I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm very impatient or I just want to, I just, I, I, since I've been doing this for 20 years, but very inconsistently, I guess in my mind, I'm like, I should be, you know, I should look fit. Like I should look like I've actually trained. Yeah. But if I think about it, I haven't been consistent long enough to look like I fucking trained. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, All right. I, I'm, before, before Sal gives you the advice and cause I, I, he's going to give you the advice to, to handle this. Uh, it's not that hard of a challenge for us to fix where you're at right now. It's more the psychological piece and then you're going to be fine. Uh, do you have a pen in front of you? Of course. Okay. Write down, uh, mindpumptrainer.com and you should be in there already. Okay. This is for all the aspiring trainers and trainers that you need to be going through our course. Okay. That's and you're all oh, you're gonna be in a community of 700, 700 other trainers 
it just like you that's going through this and also struggle with the same stuff where they feel they, they feel like imposter syndrome because they're not super rip and they're supposed to be training clients. So we're going to work on that too, because that's a big piece of yeah. being a good trainer yeah. is having that self-confidence. We talk about that in our course. We're going to be talking about it inside there. So make sure when we hang up, and by the way, today is the last day to get the enrollment where it's at right now. Everything's going up after that, okay? And there's payment options if you need to, mm -hmm. so we're going to we're going to do that. And then we're going to solve you nutritionally and program wise yeah. right now so, also. So here's the irony of what you just said about being impatient. Your impatience, right, has led to this being a 20-year struggle. So the irony is the impatience is making this never end. The wanting it to happen tomorrow is meaning it's never going to happen. That's making it so that it never happens. So I'm going to give you an exercise that I want you to do that I think is going to be quite effective. Here's what I want you to do. When you start to have those negative self-talk feelings and thoughts, I want you to write them down in a journal and write it out. Now, here's why this is so effective, and there's another part to it, but here's why writing thoughts is so effective. Writing is a, is a form of thinking and it tends to slow us down and it takes the thought out of the automatic part of the brain, mm -hmm. which causes feeling. So a lot of these thoughts actually are, are, are coming from feelings or causing feelings. So the impatience is like, gosh, why isn't this happening? And then you're having this negative thought. When you write things down, it's going to move things from the part of the brain that's reactive to the bar, part of the brain that has that executive function, that control. Okay. So you're going to write out what you're thinking. Why isn't this happening fast enough? I'm so damn impatient. I want this to happen tomorrow. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't want to do it. What's wrong with me? Blah, blah, blah. I don't care what it is. Write it all out. And then give yourself 24 hours. That's all you got to do. 24 hours. The next day, read what you wrote like a trainer. Read it and say, all right, now on this piece of paper, here's my advice. Yep. Okay. Now here's, it sounds hokey. It sounds silly. But here's why this this works, because you're, the negative thought process that you have is automatic. You have to practice and train the other side. It does not come natural. So what I just said is going to feel so awkward and so weird. You're going to sit down and be like, okay, I got to write this out. Okay, well, okay, well, I know what I would tell myself, so let me write that out. And this is so weird, and I don't want to do it. And I feel like I'm like those people yeah. who say, look in the mirror and say nice things to yourself yeah. and whatever. <laughs> but just like the first, just like the first time hey, you tried to do a new, it's like when you first try to do a new exercise and you suck at it and it's weird and awkward, the more you do it, then what'll happen is it'll start to become automatic as well. But in the beginning, you got to have to, you got to force yourself. Just do that. Just do that for now. Write out those thoughts. Okay. And then the next day, write out what the trainer would say, what the coach would say. And little by little, it'll start to be more automatic because right now, what, what you're doing, this impatience, this, I, you know, I don't know if I, I, this is not working fast. I don't want to take my own advice. It's keeping you here and you'll never get out. Yep. So logically, Ill, Ill, illogically, the impatience, you think it's going to make it happen. The impatience, that feeling is making it not happen. That's the enemy. The enemy Riding is that. it out, you're going to create that distance now instead of internalizing it and repeating that pattern. Right. We need to put it out. Right. We need to get it out of your head onto paper and then you have solutions because you know exactly what to do it's just a matter of like yeah. getting that thought out and you're going to be with a community of other coaches and trainers now that we're all going to encourage you through this process too so yep between that and just because you do you have the answers already now it's just a matter of consistently sticking to it the further away you get from that with this writing piece the easier it'll start to get but at first it's going to feel weird awkward I'm forcing myself. Oh, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. Just do it. Just do it. Even if it's a sentence, mm -hmm. like it could be one sentence, like reverse diet. You need to do this. That's it or whatever, but just practice it. Practice it every single day. Watch what happens. Yeah. Cause I think, um, I also kind of fall into like the self doubt of yep. the advice that I give myself or the coaching that I give myself because I think, well, uh, write that maybe down too. Not the right, maybe I should be doing something else. Maybe, you know, and then write I'm not down. where I am. Yeah. Out. <laughs> write that down. Negative yeah. self-talk, write it down. The next day, write down what the coach would say. Yeah. 
So write that down. Uh, you know, I'm, so I don't know. affirmation. Yeah, is this the right thing to do? I don't want to listen to you. This, this makes me feel. This like This exercise is only going to make you an even better coach, too. Oh by my the God, way. you'll be a, you're going to be the best coach. Yes. if you can get through you're this. You're going to be able to connect to a lot of people that go through the exact same thing. I didn't read one more thing that we didn't address. I just want to make sure that you're not running anymore. Get rid of the running right now. You can just replace that with walking. Yeah, yeah. I had to. I had to stop everything because okay, that surgery okay. I had in December. Oh, that was before. Um, so that, and I want to start fresh. Like, I want to. Like, what program do I start with? Um, like, what? It, what should my next An steps anabolic's look like? Per anabolic's perfect. Yeah, for you're you on now. Maps Anabolic. That's yeah. totally fine. After that, you could do uh, Maps Strong. Um, would probably be a good a good follow up too. I wouldn't go with super high volume. Um, at this point, not until maybe three four months into it, like a you know like an aesthetic or something like that. But um, but I think oh, you're okay. the, yeah, you're in the right workout. Yeah, I I like I like you doing that. Then symmetry, and then uh, there you go, and then strong. So go maps anabolic, map symmetry, map strong. Do you, okay. you already have anabolic, right? Yeah, I have anabolic and symmetry. All right. Oh, perfect. We'll, let's send you strong. We'll send yeah. you strong. Yay! Thanks. You got it. Okay, and then and and calorie wise, should I reverse diet? You should take your own advice. Yep. Reverse diet. And the goal right now, okay, is to not get hung up on the body fat percentage and scale right now. The goal right now is to see how high we can get these calories without putting on tons of weight, right? Just get stronger, add calories. And again, we're I'm going to see you inside the community, so just keep me up to date every couple of weeks where you're at calorie-wise, what you're feeling, and then we'll, we'll adjust along the way. Doug, send her the discount code, by the way, because she's in there still, right, for the MAPS Fitness Trainer? Oh yeah, send. So he'll email you a, co a code for the disc for the discount for that. Thank you. You got it. All right. All right. I know Thank you wanted you. some magic answer, but there is no <laughs> there is no magic answer. Okay, so so I want you to trust yourself a little bit more. You have the answers within you. Yeah, and and can I ask you a, a, another question? Um, yes. So. What it, what would be like a realistic time frame to to truly get rid of these twenty five or thirty or thirty pounds? Um, something that you know, doing following your guys' advice and programs and this. What's what's realistic? What should I expect if there is an answer to that? If if you if you if you if you work on the psychological piece, Small it can happen. Goals. It can happen very quickly. Yeah. If you don't work on the psychological piece, then you'll gain and lose it, and gain and lose it, and gain and lose it. Yeah, yeah. So the the what you should not do right now is give yourself a time frame no. connected to weight loss. Focus on what's in front of you right now. Don't okay. do that. That's going to take you away from what you need to look at in, in the moment. Uh, I'll tell you what, Perfect. though. Okay, we have the we have the ability to put you in the best shape of your life this year. Okay. Oh yes. Oh, okay. I like that answer. I okay. like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All yeah. right. We'll see you on the inside. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank All you. Right. There you go. Sounds like we're going to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you on the inside. See you on the inside. That's it's such a it's um it's it's wild, right? I've been in the same situation. It's wild because she's calling, she knows she knows what she needs to do. Yeah. And it's it's like, can you please help me do what I know I need to do yeah. is really what they're asking. You know, that's why too, I think the community will be great for her. Totally. You know, yeah. just having, just, just she already knows what to do. Just sometimes that's all it takes. Plan. I don't know how many times I've had people say that like, Hey, yeah. I know what I need to do. I just need, I mean, how many times have we had those calls? Yeah. I know, I, I, know I know what you guys are going to say. I just need to hear it again. You know what I'm saying? So it's like one of those situations. She's so going to be, she's going to be all right. Yeah. She will be. Our next caller is Charlie from Pennsylvania. Charlie, what's going on? What man? up, Charlie? How can we help you? Not too much. How are you doing gentlemen? Good, good. good. Great. Uh, long time listener guys, really excited to be on the, on the podcast here. Uh, I got turned on to you guys years ago by a good friend of mine, Ben Price. So I just want to shout him out real quick and, uh, thank you guys for, for years of great information. I just got my certification uh, a little over a year ago and, uh, I really want to thank you guys for the three day online training coaching that you did a little while ago. I found that information worth its weight in gold. I, I, I was going back and rewatching them, writing stuff down. Uh, anybody who gets a chance to check that stuff out. I mean, that was great stuff. Thank you so much for doing that for did us. Did you, uh, did you Appreciate join the that. forum and the, and the course now too? 
Uh, I didn't. I actually, since I just started up, uh, I just got on Facebook. I'm not a social media person, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check out the forum. I know there's a Facebook forum, and I did check out the uh, course. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, definitely do that. Today's the last day for all the bonuses and the sales stuff like that, so it'd be worth getting in there. And right by now. the time this airs, it'll be over. Yeah, so, pretty much. So everybody else knows. is listening screwed, but you're not screwed, Charlie. You're not screwed. <laughs> you still have a chance. You still got. A chance. All right. What you got for us? So, I'm just gonna read my question, and I'm gonna let you guys take it from there. Um, I'm a 49 year old trainer. I just got my certification a little over a year ago. I'm comfortable with working with many types of clients. I believe that setting realistic expectations is essential for both trainer and client. With that said, my question is, when meeting with female clients for the first time who have had children and discussing their goals, the response is something along the lines of, I would just love to have the body back that I had before having kids. Like I said, I'm a longtime listener, so I'm very familiar with the exercises that develop the transverse abdominis. My question is more is directed more towards the trauma that the body experiences physically and hormonally. For example, I've heard that the pelvis separates during childbirth and doesn't always go back together completely. Obviously, this would change the body physically and have uh, different effects. Also, wondering if women who have had cesarean section uh, experience more difficult Gold, more difficulties when getting back into shape than those who have had natural childbirth. Hormonally, since a woman has to provide nutrition for a baby, is fat considered more valuable to the body, therefore hard to lose? Is any of this accurate? Am I, and if so, how do you have a conversation and set realistic expectations with that client? Okay. Are these things reversible or is this something we have to live with? All right, let's address the first part. I just like to have the body that I had before having kids. Okay, so now imagine if I came to you and I'm like, dude, I played competitive. Uh, I was a high-level football player in high school. I just want the body that I had back when I was in high school. You'd be like, okay, no, I mean, so so, <laughs> so you have the body you have now. Now, can we get you stronger and more fit? Can maybe wait, maybe even get you more fit than you've ever been in your life? Yes. But the body you had before was the body you had before. Now you had a baby. We don't want to make that comparison because we don't want to set a strange expectation that causes us to ignore any of the potential positives that we're going to experience through this workout process. That's more of a, you know, as a trainer and a coach, one of the most important things you do is under promise. When trainers over promise, they screw themselves and the client all day long. So if she comes to you and says, can I have the body I had before I had a baby? Yeah, you totally can. Like, you, what you're doing, you're, set, you're 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 setting them up for failure. Not because they can't, but because now that's all they're going to focus on. They're not going to think about anything else. Okay, you talked about the tr the trans. Go ahead. Rick, that's why I find that conversation so tricky. Is because I don't want to discourage somebody, but I, you know that that's. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, there's, that's, there's that's, also though. There, uh, listen, my wife is hotter post kid than she was before by far. It's not even close. Like she was good looking when she was when we first met. She's way hotter post kid. So it's not like. It's not possible also. No, yeah, that my so. point is the 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 way you have the conversations be very straightforward and honest. And it's not about discouraging anybody. And this is what a lot of trainers run into. They run into the oh god, I don't want to discourage this person. Like uh, let me take let me let me rephrase it. Hey, I want to lose 30 pounds in 60 days. I'd love to hire you. Oh, you know, I don't want to tell them that that's probably unrealistic and you I mean you could do it, but is it going to be sustainable? So I don't want to discourage them. You just be straightforward and honest and just like I said it. And I so I didn't say no. I also didn't say yes, but I painted, I changed the the context. I painted a different picture so that the person isn't set up to fail. Okay. But it is possible. Of course it's possible. All right. Uh okay. transverse abdominus is like the absolute base level of understanding of what we need to train when somebody just had a baby. It's far more complex than that. So as a trainer and a coach, I suggest you either seek out uh, courses and education on pelvic floor exercises. This is the type of stuff, though, that we're going to cover in the coaching program, though, by the way. That's this, right. this question is something like we are going to go after people that are professionals in the, right. and specific to a question like this and talk to them and a ask all the trainer questions so you guys get the answers. So that's There are specific it. things that, you know, the, the body does change during pregnancy. And then post-pregnancy, uh, there are exercises, movements, and considerations that you want to take into account when you're working with someone. Pel the pelvic floor muscles can change radically. There could be damage to some muscles. There could just be atrophy. And if you don't know how to target them specifically, then you may, not always, and often you don't, but sometimes 
you do start to run into um, some issues. So I, I suggest some education there. And like Adam said, in our course, when when you go on the course in our forum, every month we'll bring an expert and that will discuss this. And for sure, we're going to have a postpartum yes. uh, exercise specialist get on there. First one on the board is menopause. So right, to talk to specifically one. about you know things like this. The other thing you asked about was during breastfeeding. The hormonal profile of a woman changes during breastfeeding. That and it, some people even call it uh, like a menopause type hormone profile. Um, while a woman's breastfeeding, does that change her ability to build muscle and burn body fat? It does. It does. It changes things from a hormonal level. The focus during breastfeeding, uh, and I, I always hated trainers that would take a woman that was breastfeeding and put them on a calorie deficit and try and get them to lose weight. That just it's a terrible approach. Uh, the body's trying to provide sustenance to another human being. And what you're telling the body is we don't have enough calories. Um, and that can cause a lot of different kinds of problems. So the focus for me, if a woman's breastfeeding is I'm going to feed you adequately and make you more fit and strong. And then when you stop breastfeeding, if we want to go into deficit, we can. Now what typically happens is they get leaner during that process of just trying to get more fit and strong. But I never purposely put a woman on a debt on a, calorie deficit while they were breastfeeding. That's just so counterproductive to what the body is is trying to do. So it's like, okay, we're not going to try to lose any weight right now. I'm just going to try and get you strong and fit. And oftentimes the side effect of that is a person gets leaner. But when you stop the breastfeeding process, then we can be a little bit more pur purposeful with the fat loss. And now here's why I'm not going to strongly target fat loss while you're breastfeeding. Your body's providing nutrition to another human being. And the last thing we want to do is tell your body, we don't have enough food to, to sustain you, therefore possibly your child. Because that can definitely put your body in a defensive position, which will make weight loss impossible or far more challenging later on. One of the most important things with something like this is actually just communicating to the client that you understand all these potential challenges that we're probably going to have. And my job as a coach and trainer is to guide you through those. Now, we might get lucky and you might not have any issues with some of the things we just talked about, but you may. You may. It's very common. And when we see it and it presents itself, don't worry, we're going to work through that. And so my job is to guide you through this process. It's not as clear cut as like all women that get pregnant, this happens or this will be difficult. It's some have more challenges than others with some of these things. And as we go through that process together, you and I are going to work through it's it. It's just, Charlie, do you have kids? Who? Okay. Do you remember what it was like in the first year of life for your wife if she was breastfeeding? I, the blur. I, I can't remember anything. Of course not. That's, that's, called, uh, that's, that's uh, called PTSD. No, so, okay. So, look. So, here's the deal. Like, you're going to take somebody who's breastfeeding. She's probably waking up during the night to feed this baby a few times a night. So, she's got lack of sleep. She just had a baby. Hormones are different because she's breastfeeding. So, the body starts to kind of gear itself in a different way. And then we're going to add the stress of a calorie deficit and add the stress of intense workout and expect it's counterproductive. to get great results. It's, it's not. It's not going to happen. It's all about health and strength during that period of time. By the way, the best, the, the, the most success that women have with this process are the ones that go into pregnancy mm -hmm. being strong and having a good amount of muscle. They recover, quote unquote, recover so much faster because of that. But this is a totally different approach. Like I, 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 when, if a woman came to me and said, I just had a baby two months ago and I want to lose weight. And I'd say, are you breastfeeding? And she'd say, yes. And I'd say, we're not going to focus on weight loss. Not until you stop breastfeeding, but I am going to make you strong. Yeah. I am going to make you fit. Strength and stability is the biggest focus, That's it. you know, after that, that whole process. That's, That's why it. a lot of times we'll, we'll kind of recommend our map starter program regardless, just cause it's like your body went through this like massive uh, event that, uh, you know, you could say is pretty traumatic, you know, for uh, the person that went through that. And so to be able to kind of build yourself back up, depending on, you know, what they put in going into the pregnancy is really like uh, the speed of the turnover of being able to bounce back. Totally. And so if I'm picking up what you guys are putting down, um, we're just going to follow a, uh, the what we would always recommend strength training yep. um, and, and just deal with the small problems as they, as they arise and not make 100%. a, a That's right. Problem. Or before it presents itself. That's yeah, right. Exactly. That's I right. like MAP Starter is one of the best, uh, most appropriate postpartum workout programs that we have. Do you have that one? Uh, I don't. All right. We'll send that to yeah, you. Yeah, we got to get you that. Uh, thank you very much. You got it, ma'am. Doug, send him the linking code too, please.
Yeah. Okay, we'll do. All right, Charlie. We'll see you on the inside, see buddy. You in the coaching program. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. You got it, man. He better, I, he better be in there. I'm going to get mad at him. You hear this, Charlie? You better be in that forum when you hear this go live. That's right. I mean, this is what this we is. We have your email. We I mean, this is what it. this is. This is why we built this. This yep. is exactly the type of, and a great question for yes. a trainer and one of the more challenging. And by the way, the first one we're addressing is menopause because that was another one that I remember having clients like that and being stumped. What do I say? Yeah. What do I do? What do I go through? Oh my God, I'm a man. She's other gonna... coaches are going through the same exact uh, sure. dilemma, right? For and sure. there's gonna, it's gonna keep presenting these other avatars of people are like, oh my God, this is a, a difficult one. Yes. Like, anybody yeah. else have experience with this? Look, for women listening right now, the there's a company called uh, uh, Get is it GetLuna.com, uh, where yeah. they they will send a physical therapist who specializes in postpartum therapy to your door. It's covered by insurance, just like any other physical therapist, and you don't need to go through your primary care to get a referral. I think it's a complete travesty that postpartum physical therapy is not it's like, like, like standard. It should be, yeah. Should be standard yes, because yes. this is why women have, you know, urinary incontinence post-pregnancy. This is why they start to get all these weirds because they don't rehab yeah, what reconnect. just, just what happened. So, and, and a physical therapist who's training this is the best. And, or this. there's a lot of fear around that. So they don't do anything because right, they're afraid yes. they can't do anything. But they come right. to your house because you got a baby. You're not going to go drive to some physical therapist's office with a two month old. This person comes to your house and they don't need equipment for this. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. They can help you with almost any health, health or fitness goal. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 